Georgia Tech's quarterback Joshua Nesbitt is a Heisman Trophy candidate. The most dangerous option in the Yellow Jackets offense. He's got a powerful arm and is about to become the top rushing quarterback in Georgia Tech history. Today, we'll see if the speedy Kansas defense will rise to the challenge. I'm feeling invincible tonight. I'm allowed to take a look into my eyes. invade Lawrence, Kansas, as the Jayhawks look to stop the Nesbitt Express. College football action is now. Breakfast tailgating in Lawrence, Kansas. Never too early for some barbecue as the Jayhawks will host the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets here in Lawrence, ACC versus Big 12. Welcome to Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions. This morning, 17th rated Georgia Tech takes on the Kansas Jayhawks. Hi everyone, Bill Land alongside Dave Lapham. Emily Jones will join us in just a moment. What to expect today? Well, you know the coach's cliche. Most improvement in a football season usually occurs between weeks one and two. Both teams, even though they're coming off opposite results, Dave, feel they better improve. Well, that's absolutely right. I mean, Kansas has got miles to go before they rest. They're looking for improvement basically in every phase. Georgia Tech, even though they won the football game, Paul Johnson was not satisfied. He feels there's much, much room for improvement, and he's expecting it today. Yellow Jackets rambled by South Carolina State last weekend. You can count on one guy to show up, and that is their all-star quarterback, Joshua Nesbitt. He is a 10 on the stud meter, a 10 out of 10. This guy can flat get it done, rush for 130 yards and three touchdowns last week. Looking at his numbers, he can hurt you with his feet and his throwing arm. He got 11 other teammates involved for 372 yards rushing last week, but if they take the run away, he's going to have to get it down the football field to Stephen Hill, 6'5", 200-pounder that's got some vertical jumping ability. Ability. All he has to do is get it airborne. This guy will go up and get it in a contested catch. For the Kansas Jayhawks, they're still shaking their heads over what happened a week ago here, losing to North Dakota State 6-3. to three. The offense is certainly searching. They've already flipped on the quarterbacks. First-year head coach Turner Gill's got his hands full. He really does, and they're going to go with both quarterbacks, but Cale Pick gets the he, – he will not start today. Jordan Webb will get the start. He'll throw the football. He ran a spread offense in high school. Cale Pick is a runner. He'll run the football. We may even see a little wildcat out of Cale Pick. And I'll tell you what, though, whoever plays quarterback, they have to get the football to these two guys. These two guys are going to be their best friends. Damon Patterson in the slot is electric. D.J. Brashears has that short space quickness change of direction. Uh, and I'm telling you, Chuck Long is going to run a lot of formations, a lot of motion, a lot of window dressing to get these guys mismatches. The ball will be in their hand a lot. Jayhawks say they'll bounce back. Huge challenge against Paul Johnson and Georgia Tech. It's all coming up from Lawrence, Kansas on Big 12 College Football Saturday. story Heisman candidate Case Keenum injured in the game the Cougars quickly built an early lead Michael Hayes he had three touchdowns bounces this one in from nine yards out Houston up 31 10 at the break third quarter scary moment Case Keenum fired over the middle picked off by Trayvon Nixon he would make a big return but after the play, Keenum was shaken up. And if you take another look, keep your eye on Keenum, who gets hurt trying to make the tackle. He would leave the game. Houston wins it, though, 54-24. to In the Big 12, a busy day. Number 6, Nebraska, hosting Idaho following the Kansas game. We're going to take you to Berkeley for Colorado Cal. Kick that one off, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. The big one in Norman, number 18, Florida State versus number 10, Oklahoma. But right now, it's time to head to Lawrence, where the Jayhawk faithful are still looking to celebrate Turner Gill's first victory as head coach. The kickoff next on Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips Television. We won to 10 win over South Carolina State last weekend. Justin Moore is ready to kick it off for Georgia Tech. The Shears and McDougal are deep for Kansas as 
Georgia Tech won the toss, deferred. KU receiving here. Bill and Dave Lapham in a moment. We'll bring you Emily Jones as the Jayhawks try to rebound from last week's stunner to North Dakota State. Fans still filing in. A beautiful, cool afternoon. A total turnaround from yesterday when we had great humidity, showers, steam like sun. But today, tremendous day for college football. And the kick. The shears off his hands. He'll bring it out. The 10. And nothing doing there. He is pinned by Isaiah Johnson for Georgia Tech. And let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, you talked about Turner Gill still feeling out his team, learning what he's got here in his first season. Well, his two quarterbacks are still learning how to do this whole quarterbacking at the college level. Kale Pick and Jordan Webb, a combined 23 of 38 for 219 yards in their college careers collectively. So still some learning curves going on here at KU. Expect to see them in different looks this afternoon than you did last week. Thanks, Emily. That should be interesting. Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, Turner Gill, the head coach, already trying to find something to get this offense on track. And they come out throwing on the run and complete on the first down. Our starting lineup is brought to you by Phillips Televisions and catch by Angus Quigley out of Cleburne, Texas. Let's take a look at the front as Hawkins, Hawkinson, one of the top on the Capron crew. There's your backs and receivers. Quigley just making the reception. Dave told you about Patterson, is certainly a go-to guy. And Beery, a fine tight end who had a rough opener last week in this North Dakota State. This one is dropped on second down, and it'll be third down coming up as we take a look at the Georgia Tech defense. And again, brought to you by Phillips Televisions. The Yellow Jackets, who last week gave up just 10 points to South Carolina State with the 3-4, Sylvester Jefferson Jackson and Ibunaway at the linebacking core and the secondary. Johnson getting his first start. They think he's got a chance to be a real standout. Star potential right there. The toss is complete. Did he get? Yeah, he got the first down on the second effort. Great opportunity that time for KU. And you see Webb is fired up as McDougal makes the reception and will move the change. That's a huge play for this Kansas team. And Kansas is going up tempo. They're trying to keep Georgia Tech in a base defense. Webb rolls out and completes this one for a couple. You know, Bill, I like what Chuck Long is doing. Everything is he's changing the launch point with Jordan Webb as quarterback, so Georgia Tech can't zero in on one spot to rush him. Plus, everything is very short passes. Al Gro, the defense coordinator running that 3-4, is to get Jordan, Jordan Webb, and Chuck Long wants to get his confidence up, his completion percentage up. Plus, it's like a running game. It's like a long lateral. Those short passes move the chains. Patterson picked up a couple on that reception. Here's the look at oh, and a drop here. That had a chance for big yardage for McDougal, who had two receptions a week ago for 41 yards. Yeah, you got to squeeze the pig here. I mean, you just can't let these separate separate your hands. I mean, you know, he's looking it in a little bit nonchalant, a little bit casual. You have to, you can't take any pass for granted. You have to go out and get the football. Don't wait for it to come in towards your body. Extend your hands and pluck the football. McDougal comes wide left here at Quigley in the backfield alongside Jordan Webb, the six-foot freshman, redshirt freshman out of Union, Missouri, arrived in the spring of 09. In trouble, runs into his own, fumbles the football, it was ruled dead. He was in the grasp. Boy, there's a break because Isaiah Johnson was hammering through. Well, Ruling against the forward progress of the runner will stop. Fourth down. Al Gro, he brought pressure. He brought him off the edge. He brought he brought members of the secondary. He brought Isaiah Johnson. He brought linebackers. When it's third and six or more, Al Gro is going to heat you up. The defensive corner in that three-four, and you never know exactly where the pressure is coming from. You have to stay out of those third and long situations. You have to be third and medium, third and short. Then you can dictate. You can punch the defense instead of trying to counterpunch his pressure. Rojas, not a lot of real estate back there to work with. The punter, Alonzo, a senior. Last week averaged 43 yards per punt. Tarrant, the receiver on the low kick, escapes a couple of tacklers and is finally, he's still not down, Man. finally wrapped up at the 49. Mm -hmm. I think the forward progress were right at midfield, but 
the great field position for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Tarrant returned two punts for touchdowns last season. He is a threat back there every time he feels a punt. So Paul Johnson turns it over to Joshua Nesbitt, the third-year starter out of Greensboro, Georgia. First team all-conference last year in the ACC, leading the Yellow Jackets to the title. As Johnson has put together incredible seasons in his first two years in Atlanta. Come in here 1-0. Nesbitt wants to come out throwing and does and completes it to Stephen Hill. The starting lineups brought to you by Phillips Televisions. And you take a look at Georgia Tech, a team that last week threw it sparingly. They come out and want to get the passing game going. And there's the offensive line that's got to make it happen in this triple option offense. The backs and receivers, they've told you about Hill, and they do go to him right away. Allen had six carries for 28 yards last week, but Nesbitt was their leading rusher with 130. 8.1 per carry for the quarterback. Keeps it out, kicks it off here. Jones still on his feet. And Jones sprints to the 22-yard line of Kansas before Steven Johnson makes the stop. Well, the, the best thing Joshua Nesbitt does is make great decisions. The die's not there. He's going to pitch. The pitch man's available. Roddy Jones. Kansas not in the proper gaps. You know, that's not going to be a, a, a pleasant situation for the Jayhawks as they get to the sideline. Carl Torbush is not going to be happy. They have no gap control integrity on that option. So first and 10 for the Kansas Jayhawks. For the Tech Ramblin' Wreck, I should say, against that Jayhawk defense. And we'll take a look at Phillips Televisions with the starting lineup continuing. And Kansas defense was outstanding last week. Uh, regardless of the competition, you only give up six points and 168 yards of offense. Those are the guys that are mainly responsible for it. Linebackers Dudley Springer and Johnson. And in the secondary, they expect a lot out of Harris. A nice leader, a guy who's a veteran making his 30th consecutive start. A four-year starter, that's rare. Second down and eight for Georgia Tech. To about the 16-yard line this time as Dudley makes the tackle on Allen. Anthony Allen, a senior from Tampa, Florida. Well, the first thing you have to do is take away the dive. That's the, the shortest distance between two points is the straight line. Georgia Tech testing the underbelly of the Kansas Jayhawk defense. Dudley up to the challenge that time. Big third down conversion right here in the red zone. Third and four. First possession for the Yellow Jackets. Nesbitt pitches it here. Flag is thrown. Tackle made near the first down marker at the 12. But I'm clear that he got it. Let's see if it stands up, though. I think Kansas was offside. I think they're going to get the first down by penalty if they don't get it by play. I think some guys were in the neutral zone. Offside. Defense number 92. The penalty will be accepted five yards from the previous spot. The penalty results in a first down. Patrick Dorsey was a little bit, a little bit jumpy. You can't listen to the quarterback. He's going to go with voice inflection, hard count, and get you jumpy. With a peripheral vision, watch the football. Defensive linemen work on it all practice long and drill. Don't move till the football moves. And that's why you work on it, because times like this in the red zone, when you're trying to defend uh, points from being accumulated, you can't have those penalties and mental errors. So the ball at the 11, but a first and 10. Georgia Tech, 10.05 remaining first quarter. And the pitch to Jones. Kansas stringing it out. Beats him near the nine-yard line. Lubbock Smith, a sophomore out of Dallas. Carter High School, the free safety, making the tackle. The Kansas defense is adjusting to the speed with which Georgia Tech executes this option. You know, watching it in practice, Observing it in practice and a look team giving it to you is one thing, but they can't simulate Nesbitt. You know, they had a look quarterback, Roderick Harris, a senior wide receiver that was Nesbitt for the week. He doesn't execute it at the speed and tempo and precision that Nesbitt does. If he did, it'd be a Georgia Tech playing quarterback. Second and eight for Nesbitt and crew. Nesbitt keeps and scores. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. He made it look easy. Joshua Nesbitt, who had three TDs a week ago, gets the first, and the Yellow Jacket fans approve. Paul Johnson knows this option as well as anybody. I mean, he's been running it since 19. Look at the counteraction. Look at the counteroption. Look at the misdirection. Freezing linebackers. 
offensive lineman cutting people to the ground. He ran the counter option play, Nesbitt sashays into the end zone. No one laid a fingernail on him. He scores in touch football. Great execution by Georgia Tech. Tremendous call by Paul Johnson to get a little misdirection look. And the kick by Scott Blair, who was 5 of 5 last week. And this one is good here. Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech crew off to a 7-0 lead in Lawrence. Yard run to cap it off six plays 51 yards on the free credit report.com scoring drive and Joshua Nesbitt living up to the billing well he's got four rushing touchdowns in uh, less than four uh, less than five quarters of play he had three last week they didn't play all four quarters last week and he's got one already in the first drive today Nesbitt is the straw that stirs the drink I mean he's the conductor of the orchestra that plays beautiful music for Paul Johnson's ears running that option and they can run it so many different ways. Spread option, triple option, midline option, counter option, trap option. Paul Johnson got one out of the uh, bag of tricks to take a look at that, that touchdown run. Pretty impressive. How hard did he laugh when we talked to him this week about how important balance was to his offense? Yeah. <laughs> he said, all I care about is scoring points, boys. I don't care how I do it. <laughs> Justin Moore, the freshman from Atlanta to kick it off, and DJ Bashirs and Bradley McDougal were once again deep for the Kansas Jayhawks who find themselves down 7-0 to the 17th ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And this one will go out of bounds. So a little bit better operating position for the Jayhawks than that first go round. And let's take a look at Nesbitt on the score. Watch, watch Uzi, the right guard. Watch him pull. And Uzi is oozing with confidence as he chops him right to the turf. Pretty good job. He gets a great block coming around the horn and gives a lane to Nesbitt. I mean, that's just good stuff right there. He pulls that guard, little counter option action, and freezing the linebackers. Uzi not only gets up the football field, he cuts somebody in half. You take people to the ground, you can't tackle anybody when you're on the ground. Kansas defenders have to stay on their feet, and, that, and I'll tell you, Georgia Tech's offensive line is nasty. They'll cut you. Jordan Webb getting his first start. Great field position here at the 40. First to 10. Yeah. Got to get rid of the football. That pocket collapsed, and he is brought down at the 36-yard line. A loss on the play is Jason Peters, who had three tackles last week, got it. Well, Al Gross says, okay, I'm going to bring pre I'm going to bring four. And, you know, if you can rush four and drop seven and get to the quarterback that quickly, he's got a smile on his face. Al Gross is going to like that. If you can get away with not having to bring five and six people and still get pressure that quickly, hmm. Peter's showing pretty good speed and quickness for that size as well. Sims now in the backfield here and gets the carry. Sims to the 40, spins, and leans out to the 42, maybe the 43-yard line before Dominique Reese, a senior from Auburn, Alabama, makes the tackle. You know, the field position is so big. Uh, the first drive, Kansas started inside their 20. They did that eight times last week. They are inside their 20 to start drive. Georgia Tech started their drive at midfield. Last week, North Dakota State started five drives in Kansas territory. You can't have to always go long field and allow the opposition to go short field on you. You don't have that kind of margin for error when you're trying to figure out what you have to work with offensively. Third and eight here. Well, escapes one and complete for the first down. Inside Georgia Tech territory at the 46 yard line, Damon Patterson, the receiver. Damon Patterson, one of four players in college football that rushed for over 60 yards and caught footballs for over 60 yards in the first week. A little double move, out and up, and then he works his way to the sideline. Very patient. Isaiah Johnson, the true freshman, getting his first start in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Damon Patterson. And Damon Patterson threw him some nice little moves, multiple moves in that route. So the Chrysler keys to the game quickly for the Jayhawks. Well, the Jayhawks, the first thing that they have to do is don't self-destruct with turnover and penalty. They have to determine field position positively and score in the red zone. Touchdown. Well, connects to McDougal. And another first down coming up for Kansas. Time for Phillips Television's game break with Darren Horton. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll stay with this one right here. It's up tempo. It, it, when they get a positive play, Chuck Long's got to get them right to the line of scrimmage, so Georgia Tech has to go base. First and ten. Now 
they put it on the ground, and here's Quigley. A good, tough run to the 22, and the Kansas crowd is awake as Isaiah Johnson makes the stop. Well, this does two things. This does two things. There's conditioning involved, and there's also, you can only run so many uh, plays. Nice little block right here. Look at the full block on the backside, giving them a cutback lane. That's all you're looking for is that cutback lane. Jayhawks, the fake on the run, and then the pitch out in the flat that time. And again, a nice look and play for the Shears this time. And he moves it down to the 10 yard line. It'll be coming up on a second and three. Butler, the stopper for the Yellow Jackets. Well, rolls out. Got time, got a man. Whoa! Touchdown, yes. Jayhawks. First of the season, McDougal. Well, we talked about it, getting the red zone, score touchdowns. And they did. Didn't leave any points on the field there. That's a good answer. Georgia Tech's first drive. They go down the field and score. Kansas comes right back and answers. How about Chuck Long? You know, go up tempo. Don't let out row. Get real, real cute. And, and confuse us with a lot of different blitz packages. Go up tempo and limit his opportunity. Make him go more conventional base defense. Good move. Webb to McDougal for six. Randstetter on for the PAT. And Jacob with the kick is good. We are tied. Jacob Randstetter, a senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, evens it up at seven apiece here in Lawrence, Kansas. Reed's run, and it's like, uh oh, uh oh, I get it, uh oh. Panic, panic, and McDougal on the back line of the end zone for a touchdown. That's, that's a broken coverage, and in the film room, he's going to be having to hide his head, but that's a touchdown for McDougal, Kansas, the first touchdown for the Jayhawks this season. Turner Gill came here from Buffalo, where he led Buffalo to a MAC championship two years ago, an 8-6 and six record, and coming in replacing Mark Mangino, of course, very familiar with option football, having spent some days up in Nebraska. Outstanding quarterback in his own right. You know, if they're having quarterback troubles, he was a finalist for the Heisman. Chuck Long was runner-up. What about those guys quarterback? <laughs> that will help the signal callers. Yeah. And this one is grabbed at the 21 by Smith. <laughs> Smith still spinning. Nice balance and takes it to the 34-yard line after the kickoff that time by Ron Doherty. Now time for Phillips Television's game break with Darren Hort. Bill, SEC action in Columbia. Number 25, South Carolina, strikes first against number 19, Georgia. Marcus Lattimore picks his way through the Dogs' defense. Two-yard touchdown. The Gamecocks take a 7-3 lead in the first. Bill. All right, thank you, Darren. Interesting matchup down there between those two rivals. Top 25 matchup here. 17th-ranked Georgia Tech. Gets the football back for its second possession, even with the Jayhawks of Kansas, seven apiece. First and ten at the 34-yard line of Georgia Tech. Nesbitt, pump fake, now trying to go deep. And incomplete. We're in a double move to Quentin Sims. Sims was just all bottled up. I mean, excellent coverage, man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one out there by Rubles. Nesbitt last week, just one of six for eight yards. And an interception that bounced off his intended receiver's hands, but his quarterback efficiency bill, negative 5.47. <laughs> yeah, the normal stats really don't apply. Right. Nesbitt, the pitch here, and Kansas swarms to the ball carrier that time as Marcus Wright was brought down, had one carry last week. Justin Springer leading the way, a senior from Los Fresnos, Texas. Well, what, what Carl Torbush is doing is he's changing the look up. He's running a three-down lineman, three-linebacker, five-defensive back front, and then sometimes he's running four-down lineman, two linebackers, and five-defensive back. Nice job by Springer staying clear of blockers, scraping over the top and making the hit. Springer's going to have to have a big day tackling Nesbitt. A lot of the time, he's going to be matched up, trying to take the big quarterback to the ground who weighs about 220. First and 10 line brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Nesbitt rolls out incomplete on a third and long and the Jayhawks will get the football back Tyler Melton the intended receiver and covering on the play Calvin Rubles a senior out of Richardson Texas catchable football 
You know, you got to make that play. That's a, and, and it's split. It goes right through his hands. I mean, Nesbitt put some RPMs on that, but that was right there. I mean, Melton's got to make that play on that football. And as a result, inefficiency of the passing game. Texas Tech's off the field. Chandler Anderson, the punter, junior from Columbus, Georgia, averaged 40 yards of boot last week against South Carolina State. Damon Patterson deep for Kansas, takes it at the 22. Stayed in bounds, watch out, 30. And then is brought down Patterson, adding some excitement. Rod Sweeting made the tackle for Georgia Tech. So far, quite a match up here, even at seven. Georgia Tech, Dave. Well, Paul Johnson said he wants to outrush Kansas by a lot. He wants to have better pass efficiency. He came out the first play of the, the game, contrarian thinking, throwing the football. Wanted to get off to a fast start. They did. They scored the first possession, but Kansas, give them some credit. Resiliency. They came right back and answered. And here's Pitt. His first opportunity to play today is Kyle Kale Pitt, the sophomore quarterback who started last week. He threw for 138 yards. Reese making the tackle here. They're looking at him as more of a runner, particularly today. Well, Kale Pick was the lead. He had the two longest runs for the Jayhawks last season. When Pick's in the game, it's going to be a quarterback run package. He averaged almost 12 yards a carry last game, uh, last season. Had a 32 and 55 yard run. He can scoop. Runs off here, and Patterson brought down at the 37 yard line. John Cross makes the tackle, sophomore, on a flowery branch, Georgia, at six tackles a week ago. Kale has an unfortunate last name for a quarterback. You don't want to be named Pick. <laughs> Power I mean, suggestion I'll kill you. Yeah, how about the Kale Touchdown? I changed my name to Kale Touchdown. Well, you're back there in Cincinnati with Ocho Cinco and that bunch, so everybody changes their <laughs> names. Right. We don't do that all the time, That's you know? Right. <laughs> Patterson. Got the first down. He's at the 45 as Kyle Jackson, the tackler for Georgia Tech. Jeremiah Hatch trying to get out in front there. He ran a little bit of a screen and it was executed pretty well. Watch big number 77 hucking and bucking out there. Come on, Jeremiah. Come on, Victor. Get out there. Come on, get out there. Get out there in front and throw a block for somebody. But you know, I really like Chuck Long's game plan. Short passing game. You know, and then go up tempo and make Al Grow go very, very simple with his calls. That simplifies things automatically for your entire offense. Great idea. Pick. Uh, got Tomahawk from behind, and Jackson blew in there to, to take care of that play. Al Grow dialed up a blitz from the backside, and it got home. And that's the thing. I can tell you, as a, as a former offensive lineman, trying to figure out who's coming and who's not. Sometimes there are seven or eight guys up on the line of scrimmage. You have to account for all of them. He may only rush four and drop three, but you, you don't know which one's going to happen. And that time, he got the linebacker on the on the tight end. Beery has to do a better job. That was not good pass protection. Second and ten for Kale Pickett, and he hands this one off. Not much doing for the Jayhawks on the carry that time by James Sims. And with this 3-4 defense, it's so multifaceted, you can get mismatches. You can get linebacker on tight end. You get linebacker on running back. You, know, you want big people on smaller people. And that's what Al Groh is so clever at getting done out of this 3-4. It's so you can morph into a bunch of different looks and very, very tough to sort out. Key third down. Third and nine now for Kale Pick and the Jayhawks. Wills it, first and ten, Kansas. Wilson, senior receiver from Houston, Texas, with the reception at six grabs a week ago, sweeping the tackle but the chains move for the blue and red. Well, Chuck Long goes maximum protection. They only rush four. Everybody gets blocked, and you win down the football field. You win your one-on-one, -on -one and that moves the chains. Nice. And again, quick snap, quickly the ball carrier. Stopped by Cross. We have 3 12 to go, first quarter. Georgia Tech scored on its first possession. Kansas on its second. And the Jayhawks moving it again here. Second and seven. And Pitt completed that one out on the flat to Patterson. And another first down, I believe, with Steven Sylvester covering in the play. 
Patterson is a great football player, has played corner, has played receiver. Look at that shoestring catch right there. That's big time. I mean, that ball's coming, and, and he really, the defender obstructs his view a little bit, and you talk about some strong hands. To pick that ball literally two inches off the carpet like that and never let it hit the ground, Patterson, heck of a play right there, my man. The Shears in the backfield with pick. Gets the carry. Stopped at the 25-yard line. DJ Bashir, sophomore out of Denton, Texas, Ryan High School. Four games last year on the defensive side. They've made a number of changes. Well, Bill, there's no question that Kansas has Georgia Tech on their heels. The tempo of their game has got Georgia Tech a little bit confused. Al Gro trying to sort it out. And remember, this is his first year of installation. He's only got 65% of his stuff in right now. Jordan Webb hands it off here. And again, up the middle, Kansas mixing it up with a pass and the run. And Sims takes it down to the 16-yard line. Dominic Reese, the tackler. You know, you can be cute. Look at this. Mack Truck can drive through that. Oh, my goodness. Nice job up front, boys. And you know, you can be cute and fancy with formations and motion and window, but you gotta block and tackle. Whoever blocks and whoever tackles has a better chance of winning football games. Right now, the big boys are blocking up front. Webb hands it off again. And again, Kansas powering it through as Sims again. Not to be denied, the freshman out of Irving, Texas from MacArthur High School, 6'206", James Sims. Watch him come off the football here. Sustained blocks, covered everybody up, pats on everybody, down the football field. You have the little people working at the next level, Damon Patterson, without the football. What do you do without the football in your hands? If you're Damon Patterson, you go block a linebacker. And I'll tell you what, their chests are swelling. More and more confidence each and every snap, this young offense growing up before our eyes. Webb hands it off again, and why not? As Kansas with the momentum on the ground now. Butler makes the tackle this time on Quigley. First and goal. First and goal opportunity. First opportunity in the red zone. What did they do? Touchdown. Big key. Turner Gill does not want to settle for three. He does not want to leave four points on the football field. Don't leave it up to your kicker. Put it in the end zone. And you, well, you know what you're doing here now, too, and it may sound crazy because Georgia Tech runs the football, but you keep, you're limiting their possessions. Don't give Georgia Tech 12 possessions, give them nine for the game. Quigley looked like he was going to surge in, and then Georgia Tech stiffened quickly to stop it. And Ibanaway, Anthony Ibanaway, the big hitter up front that time. This is nothing but will to win. When you're in these goal situations, who's got the lower pad level? Who's gonna who's gonna reestablish the line of scrimmage? And a pretty good job right there coming downhill. Brad Jefferson, his D-line allows him to come downhill and block, and he puts the big old lick on him. That's the end of the first quarter. Turner Gill liking the turnaround from his club from a week ago as the Jayhawks on the verge of taking the lead after one. 7-7 seven, seven here in Lawrence. Jayhawks knocking on the door again on Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Television. Second and goal. Webb finds his man. Touchdown, Berry. Tim Berry, the tight end, and the Jayhawks take the lead. Well, we... While we were away, we noticed that Georgia Tech only had two defensive backs in there. A lot of defensive linemen and linebackers. And play action pass absolutely fooled them. Everybody's thinking run. Everybody's coming downhill. Beery is so wide open, he could have an adult beverage while he's waiting for that football. I mean, that's, that's big time. Broken coverage right there. Man. Kansas. Randstatter comes on for the PAT. It's up and good, and the Jayhawks have taken a 14-7 lead on the opening play of the second quarter where the pair of TD passes. Could I see uh, Kansas?
Jayhawks to kick it off. Webb a couple of TD passes. And now Orwin Smith and Daniel McCahan are deep for Georgia Tech as Colleen Texas freshman Ron Doherty to kick it off for the Jayhawks and a lively sideline for KU. And now Turner Gill said enjoy the college football experience is a big part of his uh, deal. They're enjoying themselves so far today, Dave. And I'll tell you, confidence in his coordinators, his coaching staff, these guys have made phenomenal adjustments from week one to week two as they figure out what they have for players. Smith on the return. Ankle grabbed and brought down near the 26-yard line by Steven Johnson. Time for a Phillips Television's game break. Here's Darren Horton. Bill, number 11, Wisconsin, off to a terrific start against San Jose State. Scott Tolzien hooks up with Lance Kendrick's 14-yard touchdown. Badgers with a 14-0 lead in the second. Bill. Thank you, Darren. A lot of interesting matchups going on non-conference today around college football. And who would have thought this would have occurred in yardage? as we get going here in the second quarter with Kansas uh -oh. controlling Georgia Tech. Going to uh -oh. answer quickly, though. And on the run, 40, 35, 30, Anthony Allen. Just like that brings the Yellow Jackets down to the 26-yard line of KU. Well, we talked about taking away the dive. And early in the game, Kansas took away the dive. Not this time. Shortest distance between two points, straight line. Missed tackle, off to the races. And once Georgia Tech creases you, it, it is, it, it's incredible. Watch him, watch the dreadlocks flying. You know, you can't arm tackle this guy. It, even though it's a defensive lineman, John Williams can't arm tackle him. He's going to run right through this. You're going to get your head across the bottom. 48 yards, and you can't grab the hair if you can't catch it. As Georgia Tech, again, keeps it on the ground here at Nesbitt. And it's going to be a Lions with the carry as the Jayhawk or the uh, Ramblin Wreck now at second and eight. Two yards on that pickup. Richard Johnson made the tackle. You know, you, you look at this. Kansas has their biggest lead of the season. They were up 3 0 in the first quarter last week, lost 6 3. Seven point lead right now is their biggest so far. Second and eight for Georgia Tech. Nesbitt with the pitch. Brought down at the 19, Springer making the tackle on Orwin Smith. Well, Nesbitt, thing, his biggest trait, or one of them, is patience. And, and, and watch how long he takes to pitch this football. And he realized he's just buying time to, to give a little bit, as much separation as he possibly can for Smith on the pitch. I'll tell you, he is a competitor. He's got a C on his chest for captain, but also for competitor. This guy, he's a winner. He's, he's won 75% of his starts. He's 21 and 7. Third and two. Oh. Oh. Kansas knifing through that time. That was Springer. Oh, man. Talk about the timing. Watch him time this up. At, at first, you look, you say, boy, was he offside. Watch Springer. He's coming downhill, timing it up. Oh, he hits it perfectly. Takes from the turf. I mean, he hit it before the offensive lineman could raise their hand out of their stance. I mean, Springer, it's like, it's like he had a, a headset on and knew what the snap count was. And did he time that thing precisely? Georgia Tech going for it on a fourth down. They were 2 of 2 last week. A lot of confidence in this offense. And the whistle will blow it dead here. Timeout, timeout, Georgia Tech. You know, Carl Torber said that he will go for it on fourth down with regularity, even backed up. Prior to the snap, Georgia Tech called timeout. Please reset the clock. Paul Johnson to talk it over. 29. Carl Torbush, of course, the defensive coordinator here at Kansas. He saw a lot of this tech punch last year when he was at Mississippi State. Stay with us. We'll be right back. sweep. Georgia Tech does a good job with all the backs in the backfield and they'll lead block for each other and the toss sweep has been a very effective play when they've had to have a big play. I wonder if they'll go with that toss sweep. It doesn't look like it. It looks like they're going elsewhere. They're at the 19. Need to get inside the 16 on a fourth and three trailing by a touchdown to Kansas here in Lawrence. They did. There it is and they did they get it. 
stepped out of bounds. We'll see where they spot the football. That was Emery Peoples, a junior from Orlando, Florida, on the carry. Well, they motion to it, and they go to the toss sweep, and, oh, just lose that contain a little bit, and it's, boy, it is, it's right there for the first down. Move the chains. Man, it's amazing. I mean, Paul Johnson has so much confidence in that play. A lot of times when push comes to shove and he has to run one play, that's the one he goes to regularly. So first to 10 for Georgia Tech trying to even this thing up. Nesbitt under center with the football and the pitch. Kansas trying to string this one out and doing a nice job on Roddy Jones as he is brought down. You know, the, the, thing, the thing about Nesbitt, ambidextrous, he is not afraid to pitch with either hand. Right hand, left hand, he's done this a ton. He can do this in his sleep. If he's sleepwalking, he can pitch. Again, ball security is big. Trying to strip it out of there and, and punched it out. It, it ends up going out of bounds. That's a pretty good job going after the football by Patman. He patted it right out of there. Nice job on Jones, a third-year star, who also plays a little baseball for Georgia Tech. Left, middle, and right. There's a look. We'll keep an eye on it today on this triple option offense. Second down wow. and right to the side this time, going up the middle. Oh, Nicely yeah. done that time by Anthony yeah. Allen. Stephen Johnson with the tackle. Anthony Allen busted the long run to get this in field, short field position. And, and a good job. He ran into his own lineman, and he came a good contact balance in the hole. It didn't phase him. He just continued to pick up the knees and churn it out of there. But what, what Kansas is doing a good job of defending the perimeter plays, but they're starting to get hurt by the fullback dive. Got to tighten that one up. Here's the pitch. And Wright smothered near the five-yard line. Springer leading the way. Went right back to the toss sweep again. The play that he called on fourth down for the big conversion. Motion to begin. Pitch it and toss it out of there. And one more man than they could uh, they could block out there. Pretty good inside outside pursuit from Kevin Young. The big defensive end got off his block and get out there for Carl Torbus. Carl, our former head coach, North Carolina, defensive coordinator at Alabama, Texas A&M, Mississippi State. He's got skins on the wall. That's the thing. These kids believe in these coordinators. They have skins on the wall. Second goal from the four. Nesbitt stumbled, but then picks up and takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Number nine, Joshua Nesbitt. Joshua Nesbitt has both of their TDs, and it is now 14-13, as Scott Blair will come on to try to knot it up. They had nine runs, no passes on that drive. Well, Terry Keeston tried to take him on. 6'2", 185. Joshua Nesbitt, 6'1", 220. Lost that battle one-on-one. -on -one. He'll run over a safety just like he did there. Nesbitt is like an F-150 truck. And Scott Blair with the PAT is good. We are tied again, 14 apiece here at Memorial Stadium, Cavisto Field. Jayhawks and Yellow Jackets. on the last drive. No, they, they did. They executed so well. And all it takes is one run to gash you. And Anthony <laughs> Allen, he provided it. Just a straight fullback dive. Flip football field position by half the football field. Nesbitt finalizes. He's got five rushing touchdowns in less than six quarters of play to start the season. Not too shabby. Scott Blair will kick it off this time for Georgia Tech. The Shears and McDougal are deep once again for Kansas. We are even at 14 apiece. Kansas and Georgia Tech. Oh, a little pitch right here. Bashirs breaks a tackle, rolls across the 20 to the 22 yard line. And let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, you can definitely see the confidence growing in these Kansas Jayhawk players on the field. The same can be said on the bench. But one thing I have been noticing is the. Uh, cool, calm, and collectedness of Turner Gill, and it reflects uh, what people have said about him that have worked with him so far here at Kansas, that he's just even keel. He doesn't get too up or too down. He says this team is resilient. College kids are resilient. They're going to be fine, and it, it's a message that he's practicing as well as preaching. You know, Emily, that's a huge point, and it, successful quarterbacks have to have that disposition. Nesbitt is the same way. They say he's cool, calm, unflappable. 
Well, once again, quarterback in here and a little pitch and catch as they've done a nice job of mixing it up and Dougal on the grab. Reese makes the tackle. Both these teams offensively have been in a nice rhythm. They really have, and the, I think the up tempo has gotten Kansas into an excellent rhythm. A lot of short passes like a long, like long lateral running game. Picked up seven on that one, and this time on the ground, and Sims carries the football. Robert Hall, the tackler for Georgia Tech. You know, one thing that Kansas had to do better today, Bill, was establish a running game to complement that pass. Last week, you take away Damon Patterson's 51-yard reverse. The rest of the game, the running backs went 31 carries, 45 yards, 1.4 per rush. That's not going to cut it. First to 10 line brought to you by Phillips Televisions. And we'll have a timeout called here by Kansas as Jordan Webb and crew will talk it over. The Jayhawks and the Yellow Jackets, 14-14 here in Lawrence. today and take a look at what's coming up as part of the quadruple header Colorado and Cal then you got Wyoming against number four Texas Virginia out of the ACC against the Pac-10's USC action continues 3:30 Eastern 1230 Pacific you name it got it for you here on college football Saturday Kansas with a football 932 to go in the half third and three Jordan Webb steps oh. up. Oh, going off without the football yep. that time. Yep. Mm. Patterson, Patterson. Yeah, and he's he's uh, obviously disappointed about it because it would have uh, it moved the chains. His eyes were bugging out. He saw what was ahead. Yeah, he was trying to make his first move well before the catch. Change the launch point, and he's looking up. He's trying to peek. Do I turn inside or do I turn back to my outside shoulder? Look, he's just pulling his eyes away as he's trying to locate the defensive back. You got to secure the pig first. Catch the rock. So instead of first down, we're talking punt on fourth and three as Rojas will kick it. Tech, nice little run at it. He gets a boomer, though, as this one too good as it'll go into the end zone and be a touchback coming out to the 20. Nicely done, though, by Alonzo Rojas. 66 yards on the kick. Our scoring recap. Take a look. Nesbitt's got a vote for Georgia Tech. Yeah, they ran a little uh, counter option right there. And, you know, this is this is good action right here. Get him out of pocket. Blown coverage on the backside by Georgia Tech. And this play right here, unbelievable fingertip control by Patterson right there that set up a touchdown. Then he had the drop that we just saw. And this is just a play action to Beery. Tight end wide open, all by his lonesome. And uh, Desmond says, hey, I got to even up the score. He does run on the option. He keeps it himself and gets those shoulder pads squared up. Georgia Tech gets the football back. And the pitch on the first play. And pow, big hit on Marcus. Right. Oh, Springer. He is ready to play today. It's Marcus Wright's first start for Georgia Tech. Let's hear what happens here. <laughs> Pads are cracking. Pads are cracking. All right, Mom. How's your breakfast? That's what happens, Moms. If your kids grow up to be running backs, you sure you want that to be the case? Springer sprung. He, he was just, he just uncoiled on that hit. Second down and seven. Nesbitt the pitch again here. And... Kansas into the challenge as Lovett Smith making the stop that time on Roddy Jones. Nice open field tackle. He misses that tackle. It goes for big yards. And, and Paul Johnson is going to say to Roddy Jones, you've got to make him miss. They take away the dive. They lock that up. Take away the quarterback. Pitch man taken away as well. Very nice open field shot right there. Lovett Smith. 11 straight running plays for Georgia Tech. And they face a third and five here. Last week they ran for 372 yards in the win over South Carolina State. Jones goes in motion. Nesbitt looking to toss it. 
and he does, and they'll get the first down on the completion to Smith, and he nearly breaks it as Smith rolls across the 40 to the 44-yard line, and again, Springer the stopper for the Jayhawks. Nesbitt has not had a bad throw all day. He's had some drops, and he puts it right on the money. And, and broken coverage right there, one-on-one -on -one in the open field. That's a good stiff arm. I mean, man, that was Pilot Patman has got a little whiplash going. That's just an incredible stiff arm after catch, getting up the football field by Smith. That's with two or four for 25 yards. And we mentioned he's had some drops with those two. Nesbitt in trouble here. Runs up, fires, incomplete. Intended for Roddy Jones. Kansas put a little heat on Nesbitt, though. You know, it's a deal where if you don't rep it much in practice, that, that's almost an allergy to the football right there. Roddy Jones not looking real fluid going up to catch that football. He fought it the whole way. Not a, didn't look like a very natural receiver. He was he was attacking the football instead of letting his hands give, you know, and, and accept the football. Yeah, you're good at what you work yeah, at. You and it. You those running it. backs certainly don't get that kind of reps, I right. would imagine. Second down and 10 for Georgia Tech. Ball, ball game tied. Nesbitt pitches at the last moment. Picks up a couple of additional yards on the pitch to Peoples. As Smith runs him out of bounds. He has got his doctorate in option football. He just rides it now. Last second, last second, last second pitch. And, and, and he is he's incredible. Right hand or left hand, he is flawless with, with, his, with his pitch. Man, that's just outstanding. Third down and two now for the Yellow Jackets. They sit on the 48-yard line of Kansas. Nesbitt takes care of that himself. Patrick Dorsey, the tackler for KU. He gets to the 45-yard line of Kansas. You know, Nes Nesbitt is... Uh... He, he absolutely is a competitor. And he feels, you know, if it's a short yardage play, I have the most confidence myself to get it. I don't have to handle the ball. All I have to do is take the direct snap from center. He's an all-conference player. His center's an all-conference player, and they handle the ball every single snap. Of ACC quarterbacks, only Woody Danzler, remember him, more rushing yards than Joshua Nesbitt in his career. Nesbitt now with 30 touchdowns as well. Springer makes the tackle this time. Emily talked about Turner Gill in, in, in his calm demeanor. And that's exactly what Nesbitt is. Nesbitt very rarely gets rattled. He's always poised, he's always calm. And co-captain right there, Justin Springer, is laying the leather on people all day long. He's, he had seven uh, tackles last week and one tackle for loss. He's been in quite a few hits already in the first half in this football game and Justin Spring was going to have to step up big and he has and a huge factor played every game last year with 25 tackles on the season Nesbitt in trouble and he goes down with Springer on the blitz yeah at the 47 once again Springer seemingly in on every play Carl Torbush has a lot of confidence in this guy he is solid as a rock and he's going to come right up to shoot and nobody picks him up a little bit of a delay blitz tries to lock Nesbitt up and Springer's a strong guy to be able to take Nesbitt down by just one hand and, and wrapping and torquing that lower body like he did. Got a twin brother who plays down at UTEP. He caught into that UTEP game last night where Houston took care of them. Case Keenum getting hurt in that game, one of the outstanding quarterbacks nationally. Third down, 12 to go. Will Tech throw it here? Play game, offense. Wow. Five yards, still third down. Third and 17, and Carl Torbush went with his three down lineman packs. He went three linemen, three uh, uh, linebackers, and five defensive backs. In fact, I, I wouldn't be shocked third and uh, 17 now if he goes three down linemen, two linebackers, and six defensive backs. You might as well go dying. Because, you know, if they if they run the option, they have a lot of speed on the field, and if they throw it, they have more guys in coverage. Kyle Torbus doing a good job of changing it up. You know, he knows as, as well as anybody. You cannot give Paul Johnson and, and Nesbitt the same look every single play, or they will tear you apart. You have to change it up. Now, last year, they threw for over 260 yards at his Mississippi State defense, so it wasn't just the running that hurt him. Nesbitt, the pitch. 
and knocked out of bounds on the play is Peoples. Ogun Todu making the stop, the strong safety. Oh, like Ogun Todu, senior out of Mesquite, Texas. Okay, do you go for it? And Carl Torbush, the coordinator for Kansas, said that Paul Johnson has a propensity to go for it, and he's he's in their field position, but looks like he is on their side of the field, but it looks like he is going to play field position and decides late to send the punt team out there. He was debating it though, but eight yards is a little bit much if you don't have a efficient passing attack to rely on that option to convert you eight. Darren Horton getting ready for the halftime show coming your direction. Damon Patterson is deep at the 10 here for Kansas as kicking it away will be Chandler Anderson. Anderson trying to drop it in there and Patterson runs up, makes the fair catch at the 18 yard line. We talk a lot about offense. Well, what about Turner Gill and his approach defensively here at Kansas? Uh, we're going to be uh, a 4 3 as far as the base of in the front seven per se, uh, but we're going to be very easily be uh, multiple as far as going to a 3 4. Secondary wise, uh, you know, we won't be just a primary Tampa 2 team or a cover 2 team. Uh, we'll be a quarter, some man, so we're going to mix it up, but uh, we're, we're definitely going to be, uh, in some cases, playing some man coverage. Well, Dave, you've been talking Carl Torbush doing just about that, mixing it up, right? No doubt, and they have played a lot of man coverage. You know, Bill, they're not going to double any receiver for Georgia Tech. They want to keep them in one defense. Uh-oh. Webb, just as he was getting ready to unload, is hammered and a loose ball. Pull him out of the pile. Steven Sylvester got the lick on him. And Webb saw it was on his front side, not his back side. But Steven Sylvester unloaded. Al Grove got a pressure that came free. Unblocked, and that's an assignment error. And you see, oh, man, that's that's too bad. You see Tim Beery late. Tim Beery tries to make a play late. But that's how you can mess up an elbow, a shoulder. Right in the middle of the throwing motion, Sylvester just unloads. And, and fortunately, no injuries sustained there because that's the kind of play yeah. where Jordan Webb could have had some sort of an injury to that throwing arm. Beery has to be more aware in his blitz pickup. He came untouched. Kansas fortunate to keep the football as Beery, whether uh, Webb this time throwing and into some pretty good coverage. Looked like Dominic Reese that came away with knocking away and nearly got a pick there. Yeah, he tried to force it into Patterson. You know, and, and this one shouldn't have been thrown. There were two, there were double coverage there. Safety over the top, corner underneath. Don't try to force it in there. I know you want to get the ball in Patterson's hand, but don't put your team in jeopardy. Make your reads and make a play. Don't make any mistakes. Third down and 16 now. Georgia Tech last week only allowed 270 yards of offense to South Carolina State. KU's pretty much had its way other than the first possession. Now they're in. Big trouble here, though. 30 16 deep in territory. And call a timeout. Yeah, we're going to talk it over. Timeout. Kansas. Second. Charge. Timeout. You got 3.57 to seconds. go. And would you call it critical? Because, Dave, you know, Kansas coming in here, they built some confidence, but you could see it go away if you don't make something happen here at the end of the half. Well, and Paul Johnson, when he, on fourth and eight, he said, he started thinking about it. Okay, let's play uh, percentages. Pin him inside the 20-yard line, rely on my defense to stop him. I'll get good field position back with time left on the clock, and I'm sure he's thinking ahead that we can put points on the board before the half and go into the locker room with some momentum. That would be big time. And, and, and really, the, the play was Sylvester's sack. I mean, Beery didn't pick Sylvester up quickly enough, and the sack got them off schedule, got them behind the chains. Now they find themselves third and way too many. Yeah, and still plenty of time here for Georgia Tech, as Dave mentioned, with 3.57 to go, unless Kansas can come up with a, a huge third down play. And Al Groh is cooking up a pressure package for sure. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, you were talking about um, Justin Springer being around the ball on the defensive side for Kansas. Also, uh, Turner Gill says he's one of his go-to guys. Uh, him and Angus Quigley are the guys that he turns to as far as uh, needing to get the team a message. Those are the guys he goes to. Thanks, Emily. Four and four, six on third down conversions for KU. They play it safe here as Angus Quigley makes the carry, gets out near the 15-yard line, and the Jayhawks will rely on their defense now as they'll try to punt it away. Reese making the stop. 
Well, neither team has turned the football over today. And, and I think at this point, Turner Gill said, look, I don't want a chance of turnover in this short field area. Let's let's punt it, cover the kick, and, and have my defense play good defense and, and, and see what, what unfolds. Don't put the team in jeopardy with a turnover in very, very dire field position. Tarrant is the deep man, senior from Miami. Rojas stands just inside the goal line. It's that rugby-style kickoff. It's a nice roll. Tarrant picks it up at his 39, sheds one tackler. Kansas, pretty good pursuit to the football, though. But Georgia Tech does get the field position that they were looking for here. And Hogan Todu with the stop. And Paul Johnson, you know what he's going to do, don't you, Dave? Absolutely. He's been doing it since 1985. And look at the success. This was a, a, an unbelievable story. He went to Navy and, and went 2-10. and ten. That's his only losing season in his 13 years. But then the next five years, they went to bowl games and won the, com uh, the uh, Commander-in-Chief trophy five straight times. This guy knows his option. And like we said earlier, he runs it a myriad of ways. Spread option, triple option, midline option, counter option, trap option. He won 45 games in six years in the Naval Academy. The pitch here, Jones stepped out of bounds on the Georgia Tech sideline. Good block that time by Marcus Wright to help spring him. That'll move the chains. And with this offense, they can score quickly. Well, they can. They can chunk you on the ground. I mean, we've already seen it. Fullback dive can hit you. You know, it may go for two yards, may go for one yard, then all of a sudden it goes for 54 yards. Same thing. And Paul Johnson is patient. You know, if it, if it doesn't, if it blows up a couple of times, he's going to stay with it. Nesbitt. Last minute pitch, and it works again. Smith. And Smith runs out of bounds inside the 35 yard line of KU. Terry Keeston there. You know, it, it's amazing. You talk about, okay, yeah, it's, a, it's a two minute drill. And usually teams score. These guys can run a two minute drill on the ground. They're, they're picking up yardage like you would if you're, you know, pressing the field, throwing the football. They've it run is. for 165 yards already. It, it's, it's incredible. And Kansas isn't playing terrible defense. Georgia Tech's pretty darn good. First and 10 here, 34-yard line of the Jayhawks. Georgia Tech looking to take the lead before the half. Nesbitt the pitch, Peoples the carrier. Drags one with him. Takes it to the 27-yard line. He got a little help from Roddy Jones, his backfield partner on that run. Paul Johnson goes out on the football field and communicates the next play he wants to Joshua Nesbitt. And, and uh, another thing that Carl Torbush told us is that Joshua Nesbitt will look to the sideline and he'll get pre-snap keys from Paul Johnson and the coaching staff that will give him a little tip as to what he might expect after the snap of the football. Second down and three. Nesbitt, good protection, got a man wide open. Oh, oh he overthrew Peoples on the sideline. He'd like to have that one back. Yep, that's the only poor throw that he's had today. He never kept the ball on the field to play. I mean, you can't throw the ball out of bounds. Your guy has no shot. You got to keep it on the field to play, and he runs a little wheel right out of the backfield, and he's wide open. Nobody picks him up. Nesbitt throws it out of bounds. Georgia Tech with that offense, they know their receivers are going to get single coverage. In that case, there was no coverage. Third down. Nesbitt again the pitch. And this time, Oren Smith rambles down the sideline to the 12-yard line. It'll be another first and 10 for Georgia Tech. But what, what Paul Johnson did so well there, he knows he's getting man coverage on the play before down the football field, so he wheels his back out of the backfield. This time he says, let's go back to the old standby and run the option to the short side of the field. He gets blocked in the back illegally, really, by Stephen Hill and makes a big hit on people's pretty good effort in the secondary. First and 10 for the 12, and Nesbitt has to eat it this time a loss of a couple on the play guess who Justin is the big key for him was he's gonna be able to get Nesbitt on the ground and Nesbitt comes down the line of scrimmage and Springer's matched up with him he's not gonna risk throw, putting the ball on the turf he sees he also sees a linebacker in 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 the uh, in the lane to knock the pitch down Steven Johnson was there could have potentially swatted that pitch decided to eat it and don't make a bad play worse. Yeah, Springer, how about that for a half? 
with 10 tackles and two sacks. And Nesbitt, 6'1", 217, boy, he is strong. And you see there, just a smart play, Dave, that yep. he's not going to risk anything. They still got 116 to go, and he knows they can come back. But if he puts it on the turf, it's a whole different deal. He is a great decision maker, you know, on, particularly running the option. And, and he's a good decision maker throwing the football. The, the only problem is he's inconsistent with his efficiency. He's like an eight handicap. You know, he might be able to shoot a 68, but then he'll shoot a 90. And some days he'll shoot a 68 and throw it well. Some days he'll shoot a 90 and not throw it well. And that, that little wheel route, you know, down the sideline to Peoples was a great example of it. I mean, he's thrown the ball pretty well, and all of a sudden the inconsistency with his accuracy and the sales are out of bounds. 46 uh, percent he completed last year. That's not good enough. Second down, and Nesbitt. Trying to make the best of it here. Is stopped shy of the 10-yard line. Drew Dudley makes the tackle for Kansas. Now what Kansas has to do here is limit this to nothing more than a field goal opportunity. And Carl Torbush is acutely aware of that. You cannot allow Georgia Tech to punch this into the end zone. Big third down here, third and long. Georgia Tech in Kansas, 14-14, tail end of the first half. Georgia Tech trying to take the lead, and Nesbitt drills it in the end zone, incomplete. Trying to hook up with Stephen Hill. Yep. And Georgia Tech with one timeout remaining. Isaiah Barfield was covering. We have 41 seconds to go. And it was exactly what Paul Johnson wanted and exactly what Carl Torbush said is going to happen. I'm not going to double any receiver. Isaiah Barfield lined up one-on-one -on, -one on Stephen Hill, and Stephen Hill ran his route. Barfield... Broke up the pass. Nice effort on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Stephen Hill didn't win. Barfield stepped up. Here's Blair for the field goal attempt. Last year, 14 of 20, including 4 of 4 in the ACC title game. And he knocks this one through with plenty to go. And Georgia Tech takes the lead with 37 seconds remaining in this first half of play in a back-and-forth battle between Kansas and the Yellow Jackets. Well, let's let's take a look at what we were talking about. One on one on the perimeter, all by his lonesome. He's on an island. He's Gilligan. There's no Marianne, no professor, and does a great job. Does Barfield getting a hand in there? The ball's thrown to Stephen Hill. He's got inside position. Look at the, look at the left hand come in there and just rip at it. Nice job by Barfield. Not not going through him to make a play on the football prematurely. He timed his contact on Hill perfectly. Nice job in one on one coverage. Paul Johnson got what he wanted, just wasn't executed. And Georgia Tech with a 17-14 lead. And Kansas, a little bit of a downer for the Jayhawks after they played so well in a game which a lot of people weren't giving them much of a chance. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I think, obviously, they'll go into the, into, into the halftime feeling confident, though. It would, three points will give... Georgia Tech a little bit of momentum going into the locker room, but obviously anybody's football game. The key is Paul Johnson is outstanding making adjustments at halftime, just with little angles on this block. Take this angle, not the angle you've been taking. Will Kansas be able to adjust to the adjustments? The kickoff here by Blair. It's a short one and taken by McDougal and McDougal Brings it out to the 33-yard line and 31 seconds to go. And what does KU do here? They only have one timeout. The field position isn't horrible. They may take one shot. But the one thing that, that is being said right now to a young quarterback, do not put this football team in jeopardy. If we allow you to throw the football, Jordan Webb, do not throw an interception. Make sure of it. Throw it away. Do not take any chances. And if, uh, if it doesn't work out where they generate anything on this on this snap, they may genuflect and call it a half. 28-yard field goal by Blair has given Georgia Tech the lead. Kansas, first and 10 from the 34, and they'll keep it on the ground right. here. And Quigley, quickly takes it across midfield, and that might change the thinking. Remember, the st clock stops in college football with the first down until the chains are moved, and they're up-tempo. Nothing different than they've done the whole half. They've been up-tempo pretty much the whole half, but they do burn their final timeout because they are already in Georgia Tech's side of the 50-yard line. So you're, you're another first down and a half away from lining up to kick a game-tying field goal. They burned their last one. Nice little job busting it up the gut. 
to, to set this thing up. A little underneath handoff. Look at the blocking up front. Everybody doing a good job of keeping their hats on people and establishing a running lane, and it is fully taken advantage of. Kansas' offensive line doing a good job of sustaining blocks. They're getting their hands inside and, and just locking people down. Nice effort by Quigley, too, getting all he could out of that run. Well, and Ramstetter's got a leg. He had a 57-yarder yeah. against Oklahoma right. last year, so they are within reach with one good play. He's, uh, that's tied for fourth longest in school history, and it kind of came out of nowhere. Everybody was shocked, but he did it. I mean, he blasted that thing from 57. <laughs> the thing you have to watch out for on the long field goals is, is you're going to have to get proper elevation. You know, when it's a, a long field goal, you tend to hit a three iron, and you really have to hit an eight or nine iron, you know, to make sure that guys don't get their hands on it. How's your golf game? A lot of reference there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ugly as usual. <laughs> Let's see what KU comes up with. First and 10, 24 seconds to go. They've used their final timeout. Webb is scrambling and throws this one away with 18 seconds on the clock. Okay, now you got to pick up more yards. Somehow you have to come up with a play, come up with a route tree that will get you an opportunity to kick a field goal. You're on, you're on the right side of the field. You, you can't kick it from here, obviously. Gonna have to and, and you do have one more down that you can spike it and kill to get your you, you know get your field goal team out on the football field that's not going to be an issue but boy if you could move the chains one more time and get an opportunity to line up for a makeable and not a not a prayer it would be helpful at the 48 yard lot Jordan Webb going two TD passes oh. this one deflected and nearly picked off that was <laughs> Sylvester that says oh I should have had it yeah, he's shown his versatility. He's the one that crushed on the blitz, crushed Webb's right throwing shoulder, and then he dropped back in the coverage and got his mucker up on that thing. Nice protection, though. Look at the look at the pocket. Vision totally unimpeded. That's a pretty nice job. Just getting back in the never did see, never did see the linebacker dropping back in the coverage. Patterson got quick separation from Isaiah Johnson. He wanted that rock. He wanted the football immediately. Third down, 13 seconds to go. You got to have to get out of bounds in this situation. He rolls to the near sideline. Webb, oh, thinking that, but couldn't connect here. And incomplete. <laughs> Trying to go to McDougal, and it'll set up a fourth down with eight seconds to go. Okay, now. You know, you got to make sure that you take all the time off the clock on this fourth down and, and down the sideline. Take a look. Is, was there an opportunity down the sideline? He was, I don't know. Georgia Tech, final charge, timeout in the first half. Georgia Tech's going to make them think about it because if they don't convert here on fourth down, Georgia Tech gets the ball around midfield. I mean, it, this is one of those situations. They get a chance for a play. Do you punt it away? Oh, and then, and then you, the coaches think, well, if I punt it, what if they come with a block and our guys break and why up? why wouldn't they, right? And, right. And Kansas had a punt block last week. Mm -hmm. A guy was unblocked, and he came in, and, and, and it was a mental error. It wasn't a physical error. But Turner Gill may be thinking, I'm a little gun-shy about my punt team. You know, a guy let me down last week, and they blocked him. I don't, sure don't want Georgia Tech to block this one, pick it up and score, or find themselves in good field position. But if they go for it here on fourth down, they almost have to make sure that and they can't run the field goal team on in time. If they get a first down, the chains or the clock will stop until the chains move, but they're not going to be able to get out there and line up and kick a field goal in time. So, I don't know, they're kind of between the rock and the hard place right now. Wheels turning on both sidelines, and, you know, Paul Johnson, and specifically Al Groh, probably saying, hey, don't give up this Hail Mary situation right. either. That, right. I mean, if you have to, if it's in the end zone, commit a penalty. So it, it goes for 15 yards and make sure that the clock expires when you throw this in the end zone and, or, or as you run it which it did Webb basically okay, runs yeah. it out there as he is brought down by Brad Jefferson but an interesting first half was 17th ranked Georgia Tech the lead going to the locker rooms as the Yellow Jackets get the last 10 and go up 17 14 Blair's 28 yard field goal the difference at the moment Nesbitt has got a couple of scoring runs. Webb is thrown for two touchdowns. And let's send it down to Emily Jones. Coach, I guess, first of all, were you surprised by the up-tempo offensively for no, Kansas? not really. That's kind of what they do. We just got to do a little better job getting them off the field and 
execute a little better on offense. We left a couple of touchdowns out there in the passing game. Moving the ball well, but just 14 yards rushing for Nesbitt. What are you looking for him out of the second half? I don't care half? who gets the yards. That doesn't matter. Hey, Thanks very much. Best of luck in the second half. Guys, doesn't care where the yards come from or how the points come as long as they're coming. That's right, Emily. He's, he's, he's got his game face on, doesn't he? Unbelievable. Time now to send it to Darren Horton, our L.A. studios with the Geico Halftime Show. Darren, take it away, bud. Saturday following this game, we're going to take it to Berkeley, where Colorado will get a taste of the Pac-10 against Cal later. Third game of our quadruple header, fourth-ranked Texas hooking up with the Cowboys of Wyoming. That's at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And then the nightcap, we've got USC and Virginia kick that one off at 10.30 Pacific, uh, Eastern, rather. Uh, as we go to break, a little brain whiz for you, Jayhawk linebacker, Drew Dudley. If you date him, bring a parachute. The guy loves to skydive in addition to hitting the books, 3.72 in civil engineering. He can strum the guitar. More on the Geico Halftime Show when we continue in just a moment. Look at some numbers, no big surprises. The team that we thought would run the ball ran the football for 188 yards. Kansas uh, a little bit more balanced. I mean, they threw for 102, rushed it. I, that's the big key. They rushed the ball for 60 yards, and it was significant, uh, consistently well-executed running plays. But everything, you look at it, it's very, very even, time of possession, third down conversions, first downs. That's why we have a three-point football game. Outstanding play by both teams. Who's going who's gonna to get the big advantage early here in the third quarter? Emily, I know you got uh, somebody that can answer that question for us. Thank you very much here with Turner Gill. Uh, the up-tempo offense seemed to be working early. I had to feel good about the way they were moving things in the first half. Well, I like the way our guys play with some energy. That's the main thing we wanted to do, play with some energy. Plus, we executed a little bit better on offense and defense. We know they're a high power in offense, so we got to score touchdowns. They did move the ball. Nesbitt, though, seemed to be contained only 14 yards rushing in the first half. The key there defensively. Where our guys flying to the ball. I mean, Coach Tor Bush and the staff defensively have done a great job of getting our guys prepared for this uh, offense, and we got to keep it up, though. We got uh, definitely 30 more minutes to go. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Best of luck in the second half. Bill, Dave, back up to you guys. All right, thanks. Orwin Smith with the return for Georgia Tech. But a flag. block in the back during the return. Number 82 receiving team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Our Geico players to watch, well, we knew Nesbitt would certainly be one to keep an eye on. Webb has been very impressive and defensively. How about man, Springer? Springer's been the man. That's, a, that's impressive. 11 tackles in a half, three of them for loss, and a sack. Basically, that's four plays behind the line of scrimmage that put Georgia Tech behind the chains. Springer has been a difference maker, to say the least. And Georgia Tech gets a little negative here as the penalty sets them back here after the kickoff. First and 10. Now break from their own eight-yard line to start the third quarter with a three-point lead over Kansas. Nesbitt with the pitch. Roddy Jones is brought down at the 10-yard line. Lubbock Smith is there from the free safety position. Lubbock Smith has done that more than once. One on one in the open field. Roddy Jones. Good backs make the first guy miss. Roddy Jones has not been able to make Lubbock Smith miss two times on the perimeter. Nice effort selling out by Lubbock Smith. Running through the running back, taking him to the turf. Jones, six carries, 40 yards. Allen leads him with 66 yards on four carries in this first half of play, or in the first half, I should say, as it's now second down and eight from the 10. Nesbitt takes it himself, dives Nesbitt across the 15 to the 16-yard line, and Olighton Ogentodu with the tackle. Well, this is a, a big third down right here. If Kansas can somehow control the option and make Georgia Tech punt the football away, one, two, three, and out, after sustaining a penalty on the opening kickoff, that would uh, add a measurably 
after their emotional lift. Nesbitt, two of seven in the passing game for 25 yards. A third and two. Kansas in there, 3-3-5, three, three, Bill. Nesbitt oh. keeps. No, sir. Kansas answers. What a hit as the Jayhawks make the stop. Drew Dudley was big on that play. Drew Dudley came downhill. An outstanding play by Kansas. I mean, there's no way Paul Johnson is going to go for it on fourth down backed up like this. Mike Leach might think about it, but <laughs> Paul Johnson is not going to do it. And Kansas defense steps up a one, two, three and out and should afford their offense decent field position. Yeah, able to take advantage of that penalty that put Georgia Tech in a bit of a hole and then get the three and out. Chandler Anderson on to punt it. Damon Patterson, stay away from it. Wow. High but short kick, and it takes a Kansas bounce, and the Jayhawks will have it inside the 30-yard line. Well, they're talking about one of their keys. Actually, they've done a good job on a lot of them. No self-destruction. They haven't had a lot of penalties. Uh, Kansas hasn't. They haven't, haven't had any turnovers. Field position, they've done a good job there. They struggled in that last week. They scored touchdowns when they've gotten in the red zone. I mean... Turner Gill, his game plan has been executed extremely well. And now Kansas has a short field opportunity to not only tie the game, but maybe take a lead again. A 13-yard punt. Here's what happened on their first half possessions. This was big right here. Two, uh, 21 plays for 14 points. Quigley. Dang tackle. About the 19. Might rather make it the 24-yard line. And... Izan Cross makes the stop that time for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Turner Gill tells Emily there, we got to get touchdowns. I would think they need one here. You're not going to have a better scoring opportunity against an outstanding team like Georgia Tech. Uh, there's, there's no question about it. I mean, when you have, when opportunity knocks like this, you have to open that door wide and welcome everybody in. Georgia Tech's going to try to slam that door of opportunity. Jordan Webb was 12 and 19 for 102 yards in the first half. This one complete and connects with McDougal who had a touchdown reception Beery also had one Mario Butler made the tackle and now Kansas with a key third down three and uh, third and four is the situation for the Jayhawks if Beery could have gotten himself a little bit better lock block on the perimeter that little receiver screen could have gone for nice yards well played by Georgia Tech to get off the block so quickly Sims comes into the backfield. He ran for 26 yards in the first half. Gets an opening here. 15. Sims knocks it down inside the 10. This is a true freshman. Sims out of Irving, Texas. Six feet, 206 pounds. And he's bringing it. Finishing every run hard. First and goal to go from the seven-yard line for Kansas. Sims again, weaves his way inside the five, down near the two. And there is Cross to make the stop. Well, you look at, uh, you, get, you get in the red zone, you want to pound it in for touchdown. This is a nice little delay draw action. It looks like it's going to be Get the quarterback out of pocket, change the launch point. Nope, just stick it underneath, a little slow draw. Stick it in the belly of James Sims. And the offensive line, big time up front. I mean, they're establishing creases for running backs nicely. Second and goal to go from the two-yard line. Sims strolls into the end zone. Kansas takes advantage of that field position and, as a result, has the lead again. Foster helped open the door for James Sims. First touchdown as a Kansas Jayhawk. And a nice block by Bradley to do the tight end. I mean, he just he takes takes him takes the linebacker off his feet. Little pancake block. Throw some syrup on that pancake. Nice job, the big tight end taking the linebacker to the turf unceremoniously. Brandstetter for the PAT. And it is good. And just like that. Kansas gets a three and out from its defense, and then Sims the touchdown, 21-17 KU.
Estes on top by four to kick it off with Ron Doherty. He'll land Dave Lapham, Emily Jones with you here. 17th ranked Georgia Tech. New Kansas would be better than what they saw a week ago when they lost to North Dakota State. I don't know if anybody thought they played this well. And this one in the end zone, Smith will let it go there. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. And on that touchdown, it takes more than the runner. Yeah, the runner has it easy. If you get blocks like this, watch my guard, Marangeli. Watch my tight end, Godot. He's going to make a lot of dough if he continues to do this. Marangeli, kick out that little cornerback. Godot, take him to the turf. It's easy. Then the running back can walk into the end zone. The big boys up front, nice little blue collar action by the guys in the blue jerseys. Nice lane for a touchdown. So it's first and 10 Georgia Tech on the short side. 21-17, a ball club that led last year 11 wins, won the ACC, went to the Orange Bowl, and coming in ranked number 17. Don't expect them to panic. Not with that guy at the signal as Nesbitt. The delayed pitch, just like that, pickup of about 20. Yeah. Logan Todu makes the tackle on the play, but not before Marcus Wright goes to the 40-yard line. Yeah, and don't expect Joshua Nesbitt to drop back and throw it a bunch of times because they're down four points either. Paul Johnson is going to stick with his offense. There are not going to be game plans flying out of coaching booths when you're only down four <laughs> points the way they run the ball. First to ten, and this time it is Allen. Straight handoff as Allen goes to the 47-yard line. Steven Johnson, the tackler for Kansas. How do you grow hair like that? I just want his dreadlocks for one day. I'd like to be able to run a 4-4-40 like him and have hair like him. Just not even a day, just an hour. Just an hour. Well, the truck is saying they'd rather see you have a waist like him. Yeah. Well, right. We don't know if we can handle your hair like that. Yeah, right. The pitch again by Nesbitt down the sideline and fumbled but out of play as Roddy Jones whether Peoples, a bigger pardon, as Dudley makes the stop on Emory Peoples, a junior from Orlando, Florida. I'll tell you, when you look at the pitch, it almost looks like it's a forward pass. He's beyond the line of scrimmage, and it's right down the line. I mean, it's illegal to pitch it forward if you're past the line of scrimmage. He walks that tightrope, but he's done it so many times. He knows exactly when to release it, how to release it. He is a magician. Press the digitation. First and 10 for Georgia Tech trying to come right back and answer Kansas early touchdown in the second half. Allen this time the ball carrier. Ogun Todu with the tackle for Kansas. Well, in Nesbitt, when people look at award possibilities, Dave, sometimes, they, okay, he doesn't throw the ball particularly well, but how about the pitch and the ability there? He gets no credit for that. No, oh, yeah, it, that's true. I mean, he's in a different category, but look at how balanced they've been. They've hit every quadrant. Left, middle, right, almost the same number. This time, the defense stiffens for the Jayhawks as Allen stopped at the 28-and-a-half-yard line. Quinton Woods, a senior from Flint, Michigan, there to make the play. You know, again, you look at, you look at the triple option, and, you know, people say, oh, the quarterback distributed the ball all over the field. He hit every level of the field. In Paul Johnson's option, they hit right, left, and middle equally. It's even distribution. You know, there's such a thing as being balanced running the option, too, and they are. They had, what, 12 ball carriers last year, last week, for right. 300 plus yards Ooh. rushing. And Roddy Jones is snapped that time by Steven Johnson. Man, that's just good read right there. Paul Johnson, it's called beaten by Steven Johnson. Bunch of Johnsons in this game. And, and, and I'll tell you, that's a pretty good job. Corner force, came inside in force, scraping over the top. Steven Johnson takes him right off his feet. I'll, I'll tell you what, our, our, good, our good friend Roddy Jones has been taken off his feet multiple times in space today, one-on-one. -on -one. Fourth and seven. Nesbitt looks to throw it. Incomplete. And Candace will take over. Calvin Rubles on the play defensively. So the Jayhawks, the last time they got it at the 28-yard line of Georgia Tech, this time 
They'll get it at their own 28-yard line, but they get the stop, which is all that matters. No doubt, I'll tell you, they, they are the better team coming out of the locker room, better adjustments by the Jayhawks. It's unbelievable. Turner Gill has done wonders with this football team from week one to week two. Italy, South Korea, and Japan, we welcome you and we thank you, particularly here on September 11, is for all of the things you do to keep our country safe. No question. A heartfelt thank you for your service. Kale Pick comes on to quarterback Kansas. We saw him early in the game. He started last week and picked the sophomore out of Dodge City, Kansas. Gets another series here. Jordan Webb went the bulk of the way in the first half and now pick is on again it's first second he, down and five. First thing he did run pick yep. comes in. you have to and, and Chuck Long did a good job he, he ended up throwing it some you have to mix it up fake handoff and pick will go forward with it here to the 37 yard line and Tarrant makes the tackle Dave you mentioned earlier both these quarterbacks so inexperienced you got a new coaching staff right. didn't recruit a lot of these guys trying to just figure out how do we put them in the right way where they can be successful? Exactly. You have to find out what their skill set is, and it's obvious. Pick is a great runner, you know, and, and you have a quarterback who executed the spread offense, Jordan Webb, in high school, so you accentuate their talents, and you put together packages to let them shine, and it's working. I mean, Chuck Long, heck of a job. Tip of the cap to you. Third and three. Pick can't just run off, and... Quigley has stopped short of the first down. Yeah, Pick last year ran for 167 yards on just 14 carries in seven games. Almost 12 yards a carry, and he had the two longest rushes of the season for the Jayhawks last year. He had a 32-yard run and a 55-yard saunter. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty strong. But the next thing he's going to have to do is, you know, every time Pick goes in the game, you know, defense is going to be, okay, the quarterback run package. Right. And, and also, Webb's going to have to run it a little bit. You know, going to have to change it up so they don't get an obvious bead on what you're doing. Yeah, Webb was on there, of course, in the passing possibility situation. But it sets up fourth and two, and Kansas will punt it with Rojas to kick it away here. George Tech coming after him, and there's a flag, yeah. and he is down. I mean down. Man. Slow to get up. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Number 43 on the defense. 15 yards. Previous spot. Automatic first down. Lance Richardson with the uh, penalty, and you hate to see the seven-point stance. Hands and knees and the head on the ground. You know, you don't mind three and four point stances, but you don't want to see seven point stances. Miss the kick, runs right into the defenseless kicker, and that's how you can mess some uh, legs up. You can have an ankle, knee injury, and, and Rojas makes sure that the official saw that. And, and uh, Honest, when he grabbed his head like that, that's panic. It's like, oh man, I'm totally exposed. He's got a cut on the left arm, and he's totally exposed, and he's, he's struggling to get off the football field. Lonzo Rojas, senior from Miami, Florida, transferred from Bowling Green, honorable mention, all-conference punter a year ago in the Big 12. He averaged 41 yards a kick. And the result of it is Kansas going to get outstanding field position again and obviously keep possession of the football as now they move it into Georgia Tech territory. You know, so... Who knows how this game turns, Dave, but a poor punt by Georgia Tech set up Kansas to take the lead, and now a, a failed block attempt that leads to a penalty could set him up again. After the snap, let's talk about two huge penalties. Sims gets the handoff, and Sims, who scored the touchdown to start the second half for Kansas, takes it to the 40. Just a couple short of a first down. Butler the tackler. The running backs ran for 1.4 yards a carry last week. That's not going to beat anybody. But this offensive line and tight end Beery coming off the ball and establishing running lanes. They come right back to the action as they quickly set up the play. And that will be a first down on this reception. Ted McNulty, junior out of Iowa City, Iowa. Played briefly last year. He gets the reception and the first down. Reese the tackle. Multiple tight end set. They have a little bunch of action going on here, but they have their big boy pads on. They're knocking them around a little bit. A little play action. First to ten line brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Sims 
Won't get a first on that one. He cuts it upfield across the 30 down near the 27 yard line. 4.42 to go in the third quarter. Kansas 21 17. How about Georgia Tech? Opening kickoff, good field position, holding penalty. Knocks them back. Then they have the bad punt. Then all of a sudden, as can't they defense holds as Kansas punting, another penalty. Two penalties in, in two special teams, critical special team scenarios to start the second half. Georgia Tech self destructive now Kansas moving again as Webb, the quarterback, a flag thrown here. Ball start, offensive line, five yards, still second down. And if, you know, when that happens, a lot of times the center forgets the snap count. Everybody moves and he doesn't snap the football. So it's like, wait a minute now, the two <laughs> people that can't forget the snap count are the center and the quarterback. And if the center forgets the snap count and it's on two and everybody's moving and he thinks it's three, it can look a little ugly ugly like that. Second penalty on KU today. Last weekend, they had eight for 70 yards. They're also minus two in the turnover category. You saw Turner Gill. He was saying, we must come ahead in the turnover category. The penalties have been the swing so far. Jordan Webb. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. And goes right into the hands of the Georgia Tech defender, Kyle Jackson. Brady McDougal had it right in his bread basket, and he just spit the bit. Just like lateraled it, lateraled it to the defender. And we were just talking about no turnovers, yeah. and this, this shouldn't be either. I mean, this is well played, and the blocker's in front, but McDougal's trying to, I think, take a little sneak peek at the blocking going on in front of him and, and never really controlled the football well. His feet were all tangled up underneath him, too. He had his feet crossed over. Unfortunate tragedy right there when uh, opportunity was knocking. First turnover of the game, and let's see if Tech can take advantage of it as the Yellow Jackets pitch it to Marcus Wright. He's a junior out of San Antonio, Texas that set a city rushing record in his days down there. You know, that's the kind of interception that's unfortunate for the quarterback. It goes in his stats. He did nothing wrong. You know, sometimes I think those interceptions should be somehow allotted somewhere else statistically because, you know, I know it's a team game, but man, the quarterback did nothing to take that shot. First and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Peoples in motion, gets the pitch, sheds a tackler, stumbles all the way across the 45 near the 47. Steven Johnson, the stopper for Kansas. And what Kansas has to do defensively is pull their neck. You can't lose your enthusiasm and your momentum. And uh, Carl Torbush, you know, wants to get a defensive stop and help the offense out. A, a turnover that shouldn't have occurred. You can't get your dauber down and let Georgia Tech score. There's Nesbitt at the controls and gives it up here on the handoff to the 50-yard line. Carrying the football, Preston Lyons. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, if you'll remember, offensive coordinator Chuck Long for Kansas told us on that conference call this week that turnovers are like bombs exploding. Three such bombs last week, and as you just saw, just the one here today, hopefully a for Kansas's sake, the uh, Jayhawks can recover from it. Yeah, hopefully it's not an atomic bomb. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, saying, hey, we need to take advantage of it now. It's Nesbitt on the carry on a second and seven. Not much, maybe a yard to the 49 of KU. And, and you know, the thing about when Chuck Long says that, it's because, like we've talked about, that he's trying to figure out his 11 best players. He's trying to figure out offensive formations and sets to put them in. And there's little margin for error. And when you when you make an error like that that shouldn't have been made, that is like a bomb being blown up and not defused. Third and six, Georgia Tech has run it 13 times to start the second half. What will they do here? Nesbitt under center. Fumble. Fumble. He dives on it. And it'll be fourth down now and six. You see where they spot the ball. Paul Johnson gonna punt yeah not gonna go for it here he's not happy at all with that miscue and that's that's it and he's right he's all over his center and, and it, this is a this is a great football player Sean Bedford former walk-on that was a defensive lineman and, and Paul Johnson said why don't you come and, and beat the offensive lineman out that you're beating up in practice and the kid has turned into an all-conference player Chandler Anderson the punter Kansas stays away from it. Georgia Tech will down it at the 15-yard line. So Kansas will get it back with 109 to go in the third and a four-point lead on college football Saturday.
also five tackles, the SEC Special Teams Player of the Week. And, of course, it's named after the Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott, College Football Defensive Impact Player of the Year, but also recognizes personal character and community contributions. Congratulations to him. No question about it. Kansas comes out throwing this time, and Patterson hangs on and chugs forward across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And Mario Edwards makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Great call. It's just like the running game. It's like a long lateral. Get the ball to Patterson in space and let him do a little razzle-dazzle, make you miss. Ooh. Wow. Speaking of make a miss, and now Sims rolling, rambling, if you will, on Tech to midfield. You know, Sims almost fumbled the football. He has possession uh, issues initially. Watch this. Bobble it, and then go Evan Moses. Hurt a little bit and get up the football field. Amazing. You know, and, and you look at Kansas. No names on the back of the jerseys about the name on the front of the jersey, Turner Gill says. Ooh. This time, Jordan Webb has wrestled down a loss on the play back at the 43-yard line. Steven Sylvester there. Here's the play before. Look at Sims. Nice elevation. That's the high hurdles. That's not the low hurdles in football. Football equipment, you get guys trying to grab at your feet and your legs. That's big time. That's a pretty looking athlete right there. Bill, if we tried that, there'd be meniscus, there'd be ACLs, MCLs, PCLs, there'd be ligaments, there'd be tendons. Screaming. Oh, it'd be ugly. It'd be ugly. I'll tell you, you can't put, you can put a maybe today's newspaper under my vertical. That that bad boy was up. He was airborne. But don't try to get in your way when you move into the dinner table. That's right. That's right. Throw the about power there. 21-17, Kansas after three quarters here in Lawrence. And James Sims, the true freshman, 83 yards rushing, averaged seven and a half yards of carry after three quarters. Here's Webb, scrambling. Smartly just throws that one away. Yes, Sims, the leading rusher at 83. You've got Nesbitt, 11 carries, 20 yards today after he ran for 130 last week in the season opening win. Their leading rusher is Anthony Allen for Georgia Tech with 78 yards rushing. This is as good an adjustment in game planning as I've seen out of a coaching staff. I mean, Turner Gill and his staff, massive tip of the cap. The tailbacks have combined for 129 yards on 19 carries. Last week, they averaged 1.4. I mean, they, they're getting it done. They had 96 yards of rushing total last Saturday. Webb in trouble. Escapes one. It is complete across midfield. Well shy of the first down, but a heck of a catch just the same by Wilson. Jonathan Wilson, the senior, had six grabs last week. And Butler makes the tackle. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number oh, 51. Wow. Defense, 15 yards to be added to the end of the run. First down. Brad Jefferson. Jefferson. Brad Jefferson, another self-destruction penalty. The third self-destruction penalty for Georgia Tech. Two on special teams, and that is, you got to call it. I mean, he sees the ball is out of the quarterback's hands. He didn't get his money's worth, uh, obviously. He didn't really, you know, jack him up. But you have to be smarter than that. I mean, Georgia Tech plays hard for Al Burrow. There's no question. But right now, in the second half, they're not playing smart on special teams or taking a penalty like that. I mean, three major penalties have really swung field position in, in Kansas's favor. Five penalties, 71 yards, and they have certainly hurt Georgia Tech. We'll see if KU takes advantage here. First to 10 at the 32. Patterson gets his sixth reception of the day. Still wow. dancing. It's scattering. Oh, Celebration flag going on here. For a little celebration penalty, unfortunately. You talk about an electric run. Holy mackerel. And, uh, and, and you know, it's amazing. A guy who we thought Bill was going to be big today, Anthony Ibunaway. Anthony Ibunaway, watch him miss this tackle. There's a miss right there at you. And there, now it's electric. I mean, this is just a guy that's just going to not be denied. And he's off to the races. And that's the penalty, the celebration somersault after the touchdown scored. But what a play by Patterson. We talked about, you know, the, the, the ability to get him the ball in space. Chuck Long said we have to get the ball to Patterson and Bashir's in space. And that's why. 
That's the time you need to pick up that flag. You should celebrate after a play like that. You know, goodness it, gracious. And if you, if you can do a, a somersault like that, and they're saying it's good, the touchdown's good, that he didn't start celebrating, I guess, but and lose the ball before he got me. I don't know what they were checking there, but fact is, you know what? The adrenaline's pumping so much. Yeah, to me, I don't know who you're hurting by doing a somersault. Oh, unless yeah. yourself, if you land wrong. You gotta read the situation a little bit there. I'm sorry. Kansas will pay for it later, but yep. they get the PAT here, and the Jayhawks now, remember they scored in the early moments of the third quarter, they score in the first minute of the fourth quarter and lead it by 11. Away from you, now bad angle. I mean, they're underestimating this kid's short space quickness. And once he finds the seam, he's going north and south. Nothing but electric. That's why they wanted to get the ball in his hands as much as they could in space. He is a big time athlete. Played cornerback here at Kansas. Has played wide receiver. Very, very versatile. Very coachable. And nobody feels worse than him about this penalty. His teammates are now kicking off from the 15 yard line. Turner yeah. Gill talked to him about it. Other coaches talked to him about it. And he's a great kid. You know, he was really excited. The adrenaline was pumping. He does a somersault and gets penalized. Kansas kicks off from the 15. And Smith will return, gets it on the 22. Great opportunity for Georgia Tech. And Smith brings it all the way out to the 49-yard line where Tyler Patman makes the tackle for the Kansas Jayhawks. So Paul Johnson sees his club. Still 14 minutes. Plenty of time as you take a look at... Z-Max breakdown today. Nesbitt, well, this is what you want, though, if you're Kansas, right? You want to force Georgia Tech, maybe not at this point, but eventually, if they don't catch up, to have to throw the ball more. Right, but even down two scores, Bill, and, and Carl Torvis will be the first one to tell you, there will be no panic whatsoever. They'll stay with their stuff. And with the field position they have, and full 14 minutes, no reason to. Nesbitt decides to unload, oh. and it's incomplete, looking for Stephen Hill. Well, Stephen Hill stopped running, and then he started just running in circles, and we have an injured, injured Georgia Tech offensive lineman. Is that the center, the all-conference center? Let's, yeah, let's take a look. It's just down here. It's just going to run a nothing but a little nine route, just get down the football. Look at him spin around. You know, he, that's not a pattern. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't do a pirouette at the end of a pattern. And, and again... They don't rep that all that much. It is the all-conference center, Sean Bedford, that's down. And, and this kid, he was co-offensive lineman of the week last week, all-conference first team last year. And uh, they're hopeful of not losing him for very long because he handles the ball every snap, just like Nesbitt does. And they're checking that knee out to see how bad an injury he may have. We'll take a break because they tend to the senior from Gainesville, Florida. We'll be right back. It's the bad news. The good news, they're on the 49-yard line, their own 49-yard line. And a lot of pressure on Jay Finch right now, snapping the ball for the first time. He got it out. Nesbitt, now 3 of 10 as he completes this one to Hill. And he doesn't get much, though. He stopped at the 45 of Kansas. Isaiah Barfield makes the tackle for the Jayhawks. He's a junior from Haven, Kansas. Carl Torbush has to be impressed with his team's tackling ability today. I mean, Georgia Tech is good in space and there have been a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackles for for no yards after first hit by the Jayhawks they have very very sound in their tackling today third and five Kansas crowd getting after trying to support that defense of the Jayhawks Nesbitt keeps wow. the football he's upended and is well short back to the line of scrimmage again Barfield there and he is down. That is a tight look at Isaiah Barfield. I think he took a knee to the head of the shoulder. And, and this is a powerful quarterback. And watch, he comes in low. And he, and he no, actually, he landed wrong. As he landed, he landed on his shoulder. He had a one-point landing on his right shoulder. And watch as he, he makes a miss. But watch as he lands. He lands on that or left shoulder, on the elbow and the shoulder. And I've done that before. If you land just wrong, it, oh, man, it just jams you right up into your into your collarbone and you know you, you hope you don't have separation and broken collarbone and all that kind of junk 
if you land wrong. But he seems to be okay, although he's hanging that uh, shoulder pretty pretty limply, hanging that arm. Barfield's and other guys play a little bit on both sides of the ball in his time here at KU. Seven games last year in his sophomore year. He had an interception last week against North Dakota State. And they help him off here, Isaiah Barfield. So both teams suffering injuries on this series. And for Georgia Tech, yeah, there, Nesbitt stays on yeah. on a fourth and five at the 46 of the Jayhawks. Watch out for that toss sweep again. This might be a little too many yards for it, but they're in the formation where it could occur. Ultimate confidence in this offensive set. Nesbitt, incomplete, intended for Stephen Hill. Well, they ran the play action pass off the toss sweep. They faked the toss sweep and threw the football. And, and I'll tell you, Nesbitt and Hill not on the same page. Looked like Nesbitt was expecting Hill to stop his route, and Hill kept drifting up the football field. And the ball was short as a result. Quarterback, receiver, somebody was at the wrong depth mentally. Either the quarterback threw it too short, or the receiver ran his throw out of his depth too long. Paul Johnson having a word or two with Hill as he came off. So it must be his route was too deep. And Kansas gets great field position. The Jayhawks, with 12.55 remaining, get it back their own 46-yard line. Twice they've stopped them on downs. To me, that's like takeaways. That's like turnovers. Jordan Webb overthrowing here as Jennifer McDougal. I think it's two two times they've stopped them on downs, four downs. If that's the that's case, right. you know, it, it is. I mean, to me, it's the same thing as a takeaway because possession changes, and, and you're you have an outstanding field position. There's no kick involved. Well, remember the time they got it on the 28, their own 28-yard line, uh, when Georgia Tech decided not to go for a field goal, right? And they get the football back, and now they do it again here, and. Webb is 17 of 27, 164 yards today. Here is Sims. He is the man of the hour from the backfield group, the freshman from Irving MacArthur High School in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Tackled by Isaiah Johnson. Sims. Man, Sims made Brandon Watts miss. Watch this. Brandon Watts unblocked. Whoops. See ya. I mean, you have an unblocked linebacker right in the backfield. Brandon Watts didn't break down. And, and make the tackle. He went diving out into space. No body control there. He's supposed to break down, get in the football position, and Sims made him look silly in space. Nice effort by Sims. Third down and three. Sims. He's got the, well, let's see. Did he get his forward motion to the first down line as Brandon Watts steps up to make the tackle, a redshirt freshman for Georgia Tech. Wow, if you're short, what do you do, Turner Gill? If mm. you're just short, it's fourth and a skosh. The way your O-line's playing, do you, do you have confidence enough from your defense to go for it on fourth down? Or do you play it safe with a two-score lead and kick it away? Ooh, man, Georgia Tech swarmed to that football pretty well. I think it is short. What will Turnagill do? Here's how far they've got to go. Gee, the crowd wants me yeah. to go for it. There's a shocker. Yeah, real shocker. <laughs> and, and Turnagill says, you got it. I'm going for it. And he's saying to his offensive line right now, number one, you know how we talked, we heard Turner Gill to start the game, I believe in my team and I want my team to believe in me. He's telling his offensive lineman, I believe in you. He's telling his defensive football team, I believe in you if the offensive lineman don't do it for us. So there's a lot of belief going on with this call and it's a gutsy call. But you know what? You have a chance to upset a top 20 team after losing a game you shouldn't have lost Manchester. last week. I don't blame Turner Gill. Jordan Webb will take it under center here. Fourth and less than a yard. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. Initially, he looked all right, but then they popped him, and he may not have gotten it. Yeah, he kind of backed up, put it in reverse, and tried to bounce out for a second surge, and he never got to the second surge. I think he would have been better off after the first surge. He stands up too straight. Mm -hmm. Instead of just taking the ball and, and burrowing behind his offensive lineman, he stands up. And if you stand up and give that half a second set hesitation, the defensive line charge is going to get you, and they're short. Yep. No gain. And Georgia Tech will get it back now. So both teams rolling the dice a little bit there, going forward on fourth down. The defense's answer, Al Groves got to be happy with what happens for his club. And now Georgia Tech will get it right back, and still 11.56 to play. 
do you put Kale Pick in there for the quarterback sneak? More of a runner. I know it's easy to second guess now, but let's take a look at this Kansas defensive football team. Tackles in space, one on one, getting it done. Stacking up a quarterback who's outstanding with decision making, tackle for loss. They've gotten after him. Nesbitt. The pitch, Balls fumble, out. loose football. Kansas has got it right back. Wow. Dudley, Drew Dudley comes up for the fumble recovery. What an answer. And I'm talking about a hit that just separates running back from football. I mean, that's just good physical football on the perimeter. And Paul Johnson is in disbelief. He cannot imagine his football team turning it over short field once again. The pitch, watch the contact. I mean, it is extreme and it is immediate. And, and uh, Terry Keeston, or, or Keeston Terry does a great job of, of knocking the ball out of there and coming up with it is Drew Dudley. That's just a great force fumble, fumble recovery. Dudley, the senior from College Station, Texas, an honorable mention all Big 12 performer a year ago. Jordan Webb sees it break down here. He is stopped at the 35-yard line, no gain. Brad Jefferson, known as the gladiator on that Tech defense, making the tackle. And Georgia Tech going to need that defense to step up again because Kansas gets a score here. They right. don't take advantage of right. it. It really puts the Yellow Jackets in a hole. Kansas wanted to play with a lead because the Yellow Jackets aren't built to come from behind necessarily. They're playing with that lead now, and there's 11 minutes to play in this football game. But how about Turner Gills being answered? We'll talk about after the snap. Here's Patterson, an incredible play on the last screen. Tackle for a loss here. So okay, Tech is dialing it up defensively as Dominic Reese with the big play. Like I said about Turner Gill, when he decided to go for it on fourth and short, they didn't get it. He had confidence in his defense. His defense answered with a turnover. And Georgia Tech's defense is answering with a tackle for loss. Reese doing an outstanding job of defeating the block on the perimeter and run support. Big time play right there. Kansas finds themselves way behind the sticks right now. First and 10 line brought to you by Phillips Televisions. It's third down and 14. Beery motion sets back up on the left. Jordan Webb got time. Uh oh. Incomplete. Looking for Patterson over the middle. You know, the protection's outstanding. Well, everybody's picked up. No vision problems. Just overthrows the football dramatically. And, you know, on that down, if you if you could have picked up about half of it, Turner Gill may have thought about going for it again mm -hmm. on fourth down if you were at about the 30-yard line. But in this situation, fourth and 15 you got to play percentages and pin him back hopefully inside the 10 yard line in his mindset yeah if nothing else he was hoping maybe Brandstetter gets a shot at a field goal now it's Rojas for the punt he's on his own 47 Tarrant the deep man wow. he got it inside the five wow. and Kansas has pinned him man what a punt that time by Alonzo Rojas Justin Carnes there to run it down, 33 yards. Austin, and finally Virginia on the ACC to take on the Southern Cal Trojans. It all continues at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on College Football Saturday. Right here, Georgia Tech backed up officially on the four-yard line now to start this possession down 11 to the Kansas Jayhawks as Nesbitt will bring him out looking to throw got a man wide open Boom. at the 20 the 40 Boom. and cutting back and stumbling peoples almost had a chance to take that the distance he brings it out to the 50 a 46 yard play it's the same route that he was overthrown for the potential touchdown when he couldn't keep it in bounds just runs a little wheel route or, 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 or this is a little different route shallow cross underneath out of the backfield and they lose track of him wide open and, and he trips over his own teammate i mean you know stephen hill's trying to block from down the field he trips over his uh, his big peg Fifth play of 20 plus yards for Georgia Tech, and they go back to that ground attack now. And Anthony Allen with the carry for the Jackets as Springer 
makes the stop. Boy, Carl Torbush came with the 4-2-5 defensive look, and they come with a throwing the football to the receiver. I mean, Paul Johnson is smart, you know? I mean, yeah. down the football field, it's not working for the receivers. What do you do? You, you, you run some little shallow crosses, check down routes, wheel routes to your running backs, get the ball to your backs in space. They can make big plays after catch. Yeah, I'm trying to make it maybe a little shorter passing game. Yeah. Pitch out here, and... First down on the run that time by Orwin Smith. Springer there to knock him away. Smith, the senior from Phoenix City, Alabama. Well, here's Kansas against top 25 teams. 25 wins, 140 losses, and two ties. If Turner Gill can pull off his first victory as a head coach at Kansas against the 17th ranked team in the country, that dog would definitely hunt for him. And quite a lot of the critics who were so upset after last weekend's surprise loss to North Dakota State. Got an early movement by Georgia Tech. And it's good news uh, for, for Georgia Tech. Prior to snap, false start, number three, five yards, still first down. The Georgia Tech fan, Sean Bedford, the big center, is back in the hunt. He's, uh, he's knocking heads again in there at the center position. So that knee injury, not that severe. A guy like that who's worked so hard, started as a walk-on in this program as a defensive lineman, was beating the heck out of the old lineman. Paul Johnson said, why don't you come and compete and take one of their jobs? He said, okay. Now he's an all-conference center. <laughs> you never know where you're going to find a play. First and 15 for Georgia Tech. Not much doing on the dive. Allen again. See, the thing for Georgia Tech, you talked about it when we were doing the uh, stats at halftime, Bill. You know, time of possession, always, always, you know, in favor of Georgia Tech because of their style of offense. But now the clock is not their ally, it's their enemy. And they don't go up tempo. They don't, they don't have a fast package. And there's eight minutes to go, and the clock is melting. At the 40 on a second and 12. Oh, drop football, and Nesbitt got to be a little frustrated. He's made a couple of throws today that just receivers simply should have caught the football, and there's another one where Allen may have heard a footstep or two. Yeah, I mean, they're all, it's almost like they're playing defensive back. The, the running backs knock the ball down instead yeah. of catching. I mean, they really do. They attack the ball instead of, like, giving with the football when you receive it. They, they like, stab at it and attack it, and as a result... It, it's not a fluid catching process. It's not like they haven't had receivers. Of course, Demarius Thomas, the yeah. first-round pick of the Denver Broncos. They lost four great players off of last year's Orange Bowl team. Uh -oh. Going deep here, trying to get it all back. In the end zone, touchdown! What touchdown a catch by Stephen Hill! Number Man, Stephen and Hill. Nesbitt bought time. Nesbitt created space in the pocket. A little slide step to his left. He had clear vision once he found that little space in the pocket, and he threw a howitzer. He's got plenty of arm strength. 40-yard touchdown pass. Nesbitt to Hill. Oh, gun to do. To do just, oh, he got beaten on the play. He's not playing, he's not playing the football at all. He's just playing the receiver. First charge, timeout. He was face guarding the receiver. Hill never found the football, never turned to put eyes on it whatsoever. And it's now 28-23 with a timeout called here. Take another look how Georgia Tech, they have two pass plays is what got this score. Watch the quarterback create space, and then he's going to go to the deep route. And, I mean, all it is, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you have to turn and find the football. You can face guard in college football. That's not a penalty, but he never, you know, and, and really, Hill tipped him. You, you could see Hill, his eyes get bigger. He turned when he's going after the football, and, and he never turned to make a play on the ball at all. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, according to Josh Nesbitt's Heisman website, nesbittforheisman.com, he is the most interesting player in college football. <laughs> they did a spinoff of the uh, popular Dos Equis beer commercials to where the guy's the most interesting guy in the world. Well, this is the most interesting football player in the world. He said he, he once fumbled the ball just to see what it felt like, then realized he didn't like it, so he snatched it back from the defender. <laughs> well, I just got back in this game where they 
two plays that went for 86 yards in passing of the 96 yards on the drive and going for two here. Nesbitt, complete, Hill again. And just like that, 28-25, Georgia Tech within three. You gotta go for two, because now you're within the field goal. If you didn't go for two, if you're unsuccessful, you have to score a touchdown to win anyway. Boy, big plays, gets Tech back into it right away. as Hill comes up with two big plays, the touchdown reception and the two-point conversion catch, and it's 28-25 Kansas. And don't take your eyes off this kick on the right. kickoff. You got to make sure that it goes over your head. Don't let an onside kick fool you. I don't think that they'll do it, Georgia Tech, with seven minutes and 48 seconds to play, but you never know. You have to make sure it goes over your head, and it did. And deep to return, the Shears bringing it out. Boy, some pads popping as Bashirs has nailed it shy of the 20-yard line. Georgia Tech knowing they're right back in it. They need a stop and an opportunity to get Nesbitt and group back on the field. And you see three of seven in the second half for 81 yards. And two of those for the last drive where they started on their own four, Dave. Right. And go just like that into the end zone. In, in Kansas last week averaged 42 yards per kickoff return, number one in the conference, six in the country. Today, Georgia Tech has stuffed the kickoff return. Sims, the leading rusher on the day, and nowhere here. Everyone in the building knew who was getting it. Brad Jefferson makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Well, Kansas has to do two things. They got to move the football, move the chains, give their defense a rest, an opportunity to regroup. You can't, have, you can't go one, two, three, and out and have your defense come right back out in the football field. Georgia Tech has established momentum. You got to let your defense collect their breath and get assignments corrected. Now, you obviously would love to score, but you've got to give your defense a breather here. And here is Webb on the carry to the 20 four-yard line. Anthony Obunaway makes the stop. Well, this is a good decision. You know, a, a, a big running lane, the Red Sea parted, and he took advantage of it. And now you put yourself in a third and makeable situation. Anything third and four or less favors the offense percentage-wise. Third and seven or more favors the defense. In between four and seven is about 50-50. Turner Grill trying to get his first win as a Kansas coach. The look nice. into Patterson. 30, nice. Patterson, oh my, still on his feet, and stops shy at the 40 yard line. That'll move the chains. Johnson with a tackle. Perfect. Go to the wide receiver alley screen. Get the ball in Patterson's hands. You talk about quick feet. I mean, he was doing some kind of scissor kick to break one of the tackles. It's unbelievable. This kid has got amazing footwork. Watch the scissor right there, a little scissor kick, uh, you know, and then and then just make two or three guys take you down. Outstanding route, and the ball was delivered on time, right on the right spot. Sims, holding on to that football. Solid run, nearly gets the first on it. One carry, takes it to the 47-yard line of KU. Ibunaway, the stopper for Georgia Tech. As the clock moves under six minutes. Uh, has two timeouts left. Kansas has a full complement of timeouts. What you have to do is eat up the clock, go on one of those long, time-consuming drives, and put points on the board, make it a two-score game. Put a touchdown up on the board. You settle for field goal, Georgia Tech, touchdown and extra point, beat you. The crowd appears to be nervous. They're yeah. not roaring. They're just like, come on, fellas. Right. Keep control of the ball. As Sims is wrapped up hard, does not get the first down, and Jefferson makes the tackle. Kansas, talk about a team that is wanting a win. Remember last year, they won their first five, lose their last yeah. seven. Yeah, They've good. lost eight straight. Three at home. Yeah, and these returning players are going, when are we going to get that W again? Well, it was the tale of two seasons last year. You know, they start off 5-0, and oh, like you said, and then just fell off the cliff. And, you know, they had, ex they had experienced success. This is a Georgia Tech fan is praying to get the ball back for his group. He's saying, uh, you know, I, I believe defense, I believe. 
kind of. Yeah, third down at two. Timeout, Kansas. Timeout, Kansas. Another First Jayhawks. Charge. Timeout. Timeout will be 30 seconds. So he's still two for Turner Gill's club, two for Georgia Tech, 4.38 to go, three-point game, and a huge third and two coming up for Kansas. You know, and, and you look at uh, the success that Kansas has had, you know, with the with, with guys like Todd Reesing at the quarterback position, with Kerry Meyer, uh, Desmond Briscoe. Those guys aren't around anymore. They're not going to be walking off the bench into the offensive huddle to finish this football game. Other guys have to start, have to step up and, and start their own little era of football for the Jayhawks. Well, tomorrow in the NFL regular season will kick off. A doubleheader on Fox begins with the Panthers against the Giants in the New Meadowlands, or you'll see Falcons, Steelers, or Lions, Bears. Then Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will take on the Eagles, or you'll catch the 49ers, Seahawks, or possibly the Cardinals and Rams. Coverage begins tomorrow. That's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, on the Ford Fox NFL pregame show, brought to you by the all-new Ford Edge Drive One. Check local listings for the games in your area. Huge third down right here. Maybe the biggest of the game. They need two. Jordan Webb taking the snap. Sims nope. did not get it. So now you sit and you dare go for it again on fourth down with that field position. And look at Georgia Tech all come downhill and attack the line of scrimmage. I mean, they, they reestablished the line of scrimmage backwards. Nice effort by the defensive football team collectively. Now Turner Gill's got more decisions to make. And Georgia I, you, Tech calls a timeout. There. Yeah, you, you got to punt it. I mean, you know, I, to me, there's no question. Georgia Tech burns their second timeout. They have one remaining, four minutes and 26 seconds to go. And remember, in college football, every time a first down is generated, the clock stops until you reset the chains. It's not like in the NFL, you know, there's four minutes and 30, 29 seconds is an eternity. So what you're thinking about right now is, do you punt it? Or do you try to move the chains and, and keep your offense on the field, your defense on the sideline? And, Keep rolling. And you want to keep number nine, Joshua Nesbitt, the all-conference quarterback from the ACC last year, off the field if you're Kansas, as Nesbitt has already and Jay a couple Finch, of TDs today. Yeah, Jay Finch was snapping to him. I wonder if Bedford, the last action that Bedford had, he's struggling physically because the backup center, Finch, is, uh, it, it, you know, it, that's one thing that Joshua Nesbitt does not want to have to worry about. One thing, I, I want to make sure that I got a good feel for your snaps, Mitch. I don't want to be having to ride you, you know, longer and, and disrupt the timing of my option reads. Well, Rojas last time pinned him inside the five. But Tech answered with a 96-yard scoring drive. Rojas this time, not as good a punt. Oh, oh no! And he hammers oh, the no. receiver at the 18-yard line. Wow. Crazy a... Candy just an absolute monumental mistake brain cramp extraordinaire that's the third major special teams penalty of this half georgia tech had two kansas just had a massive one tarrant just setting up for the catch, catch interference number four picking team 15 yards will be added from the spot of the foul first down well the first thing you have to do is keep your head up he just ducked his head and ran through him i mean three seconds before the arrival of the football you have to be more aware of where you are in the field and where the football is with respect to where you are in the field. You can't just duck your head and run through people. So Georgia Tech gets a heck of a break there after the mistake made on the KU special teams. And the Yellow Jackets, one timeout, 422 remaining, and they start from their own 34-yard line. And Bedford's in the game at center. The center, Sean Bedford, returns. Joshua Nesbitt. That's the throw. Uh -oh. Escapes the pocket. Picks up a couple on the scramble and gets to the 38-yard line where Steven Johnson makes the tackle. Amazing. Paul Johnson being very contrarian. You've cut the lead to a field goal. First down, you throw it again. I mean, I can understand when you're down two scores. I mean, 
I would think that you'd stay with your stuff, but he started the game throwing the football, contrarian there to the expectations of the defense. I think he gets right back to running his stuff now. He's 5 of 14 for 116 yards. Had the 40-yard TD pass on the last possession. Nesbitt going to run it here, and he's got room. Ooh. Oh, my! It closed quickly! Ogan Todu with the hit. He's hurt. And did he get the first down? And down goes Frazier. I'm not sure he realizes he's in Lawrence, Kansas anymore. I mean, he delivered the hit, but Nesbitt is a load. And even though that's a picture-perfect hit, he's like, woo! A little woozy. That Nesbitt, he's built, he's tungsten steel tough. And he had to, he had to get, he's getting some assistance to get to the sideline. Man, I'll tell you, Nesbitt is one tough customer. Though. He gets right up, right, right up and says, I'll help you up. I mean, that, that was guy helmet to good. helmet. Hit him right in the shoulder with his helmet. Mm. So, third down and one. Nesbitt to throw again and scramble out of there. Going deep. Flag is thrown incomplete. If we get pass interference, though, Kansas was grabbing a little bit down the football field. And they're going to get called. Looked like, was Chris Harris grabbing down there? I think so. Number 16, the senior from Bixby, Oklahoma, the leader on that secondary bunch. Pass interference, defense, number 16. Yep. 15 yards, previous spot, first down. So Georgia Tech gets advantage here, Dave, of a couple of Kansas penalties. Here's, here's the grabbing going on down the sideline. You can see the hands, and, and there's a little chicken fighting going on, and you're definitely impeding his progress on the route. Battling with Kevin Cohn, the senior from Stone Mountain, Mountain, Georgia. Kansas, five penalties, 60 yards. Half of those yards on this drive with their second miscue. So it's first and 10 now at the 42 of the Jayhawks. Remember, Georgia Tech need just a field goal to tie. They're not thinking that right now, though. Their offensive line trying to get the push as Kevin Young makes the tackle on the play. Well, the thing is, Georgia Tech is 10 and 1 under Paul Johnson in games decided by five points or less, and they've won nine straight in games decided by five points or less. Been there, done that, know how to finish football games. Kansas, with all the new players, new coaching, they're going through a process here right now. Can they finish? Will they finish? Second and six. Nesbitt okay. faked the pitch, keeps himself, takes across the 35. Philip Strozier meets him there, and it'll be at the 34-yard line for a third and short coming up. Clock at 220 and ticket. And the guy that's been quarterbacking all those games under Paul Johnson has been this guy, Nesbitt. He's 21 and 7. Paul Johnson's 21 and 7. Nesbitt is 10 and 1, nine straight in games decided like this. He is cool, calm, collected. Ooh, fumble! Kansas says they've got it. No signal from the official. He got blasted though. That was a good defensive charge there. Georgia Tech maintains possession. Man, it's been feast or famine for Anthony Allen. He's either gotten blown up or he's he's taken it for about half the football field. And that time, he got absolutely blown up. Great penetration by Patrick Dorsey. Fourth down, three to go. Clock running, 135. Hill goes wide left to the top of your screen. Nesbitt under center. Got to throw it. Yeah, early oh, movement. Flag. Early movement. I think that's on Georgia Tech. Yep, they were blowing it dead. Nobody could hear because of the crowd noise. Prior to snap. All start. start. Number 24. Offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. Dave, we had such a clean first half. Isn't it interesting that in the second half, particularly the fourth quarter, both teams have had some penalties that have been critical. Penalties and turnovers. Yeah. First half, no giveaways on either side and very few penalties. Second half, can't say the same. It's, you know, the, the, the necktie gets a little tighter because there's less time, and, you know, you have to step up and start making plays. Who's well, going to finish this football game? One twelve, clock moving again. Fourth down and eight. The play of the game. Nesbitt. Looking to throw here. Incomplete. Intended for Hill, and Kansas should win this one. Huge penalty. 
fourth and three is a lot easier to convert than fourth and eight for a team that runs the option. They're not designed to come from behind, drop back in the pocket, and throw the football. They don't have the timing route package. You know, it's not like the ball's in the air before the receiver comes out of his break. I mean, it, it's, it's not pitch and catch for Georgia Tech. It's a lot tougher process. And that false start changed the dynamic for Georgia Tech's play selection big time on that fourth down. And as a result, got to throw it, and he threw it high and wide. No first down, possession for Kansas. And Georgia Tech can stop at one time. Yep, just one time out. And they got him jumpy a little bit. Georgia Tech might be giving up five more yards. Now you're going to genuflect here. It's just take the knee and celebrate. And I'll tell you, Bill. Offside, defense, five yards. First down. There's not a better feeling in the world than I've been in those situations as an offensive line. You're in that huddle and you're looking at each other you're like, man, we kept sawn wood, kept our head down, kept shoveling. We won this game. Yeah. And you go up there and you do this genuflect. It's the greatest feeling in the world. And that's what it is for Kansas as the Jayhawks, the only Big 12 team to not I'm win out. on the opening weekend. Georgia Tech. And the Jayhawks ready to celebrate here, knocking off a number 17 nationally ranked team that won its conference a year ago, a veteran ball club with still some new parts to it. But what a huge win, and also in a week where, yeah, people were critical of Turner Gill in his first game. Right. Lou Perkins, the athletic director, surprisingly steps down early amidst controversy. These folks in Lawrence needed some good news, and wow, yeah. did they deliver it from their football team today. And, and college football is so crazy. They lose to 1AA North Dakota State by a field goal 6-3. to three. And the coaching staff, no panic. They make changes, and they're going to upset the 17th-ranked team in the country by a field goal 28-25. What a first victory for the career of Turner Gill as a Kansas Jayhawk head coach. Unbelievable. You talk about staying the course, believing in your philosophy. Turner Gill and his coaching staff, unbelievable effort, and the players bought into it. They're buying what Turner Gill is selling. That's very obvious, and what a win for the Jayhawks. Yep, the buzz kill, and the Jayhawks were the knockout today of the Yellow Jackets from Georgia Tech as Kansas about to celebrate. Flags thrown here with 21 seconds to and go. Turner Gill's not happy. He feels that it's Bush League unsportsmanlike for Georgia Tech to three times jump in the neutral zone like they are. You know, he feels that it's not being sportsmanlike. And you know how. Offside defense. Five yards. Still fourth down. Oh, and you know how Turner Gill is about those kind of things. It's a way to stop the clock, Bill. Mm -hmm. He's just buying time. And, you know, Turner Gill is kind of like the whole thing's unsportsmanlike because it doesn't, it's all a moot point anyway. But Paul Johnson pulling out all the stops. Turner Gill gets the win. What a win for the Jayhawks. They celebrate in Lawrence as the Jayhawks get their first win of the season, and they do it in incredible style, knocking off Georgia Tech 28-25. And the Yellow Jackets jump into the ACC next week with North Carolina. Not the way they thought they would enter conference play as the Jayhawks even up at one and one and truly a team effort from Kansas. How, how about the, the change in a week? Last week, the fans were down. This week, they're mobbing the field. Let's send it down. Emily Jones with Turner Gill. Guys, thank you very much. Obviously, a very happy fan base behind you, Coach Gill, starting your career off this way, your first win here. Good well, it's, a, it's a great feeling. Our coaching staff did a great job. Our players did a great University of Kansas. I know you stayed the course after last week. A lot of people disappointed. Just talk about taking that mentality into this game. Well, just like in life, sometimes things don't work your way. You got to learn how to handle adversity. And we talked about that and we said, move on. I said, I believe in you guys. And I believe in you. Your coaches believe in you. Do what you're supposed to do. Carl Torbo said he had nightmares about that Georgia Tech game last year when he was at Mississippi State. He had a great game plan today for your defense. Well, Coach Torbo did a great job. He did a great job. Great job by our defense. And great job, too, by your quarterback. Look well, great out there. Well, he's our quarterback. 
quarterback. Jordan Webb is our starting quarterback. Just talk about his performance today. Well, he did a great job. He ran the offense well. He took care of the football. We dropped some balls. We should have had more plays, but great job by our football team. Great win. Turner Gill and the Jayhawks, 28, Georgia Tech, 25. And they carry a little momentum when they go down to Southern Miss next week. And, you know, Turner Gill is the kind of guy you like to root for. It, it, as good a football player, I mean, the guy, the guy was dynamic as a football player. And as a football coach, he's got skins on the wall, but he's even a better person. And he is going to make men out of boys. He has got that ability to have people gravitate toward him. He is a natural born leader and uh, Turner Gill is special. James Sims, one of the many heroes for the Jayhawks today, along with Jordan Webb and crew. Coming up next on College Football Saturday, the quadruple hitter rolls on Colorado at Cal. Be followed by Wyoming traveling to Austin to meet number four Texas. And finally, it's Virginia against Southern California. For Dave Lapham, Emily Jones, I...